Everybody works their in Google. You go downtown, you start walking, bro, it's like, just hella people from Google. People play, huh? Man, what? Facts. Big money. If you get hot, bro, just let me know. I'll try to... Nah, it feels good. I'm, I'm cozy, bro. It's freezing outside. <laughs> yeah, is this your first... No, so you did a talk show, but is, is this your first pod? So, yeah, this would be the first pod. This yeah. the first pod. You're the first one, bro. I have to... You feel me? My boys ain't EP. Damn, bro. Yeah. So I think the way I, uh, I think the way you came where I came across you was when we did the Eddie podcast. I think I just seen I just come across your Instagram. Uh, but how how do you say you knew Eddie again? So I met Eddie through another person. Yeah. But we all were in the gym. So like the basketball community out here is like small. Yeah. But like, um, yeah, that's how I met him through Jeff. Jeff, what gym would y'all go to? Bro, I ain't gonna lie. I've been to like every gym out here, like, like open leagues. gyms and everything. Yeah, 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 open gym, city leagues. Uh, I was playing for the army team. Yeah, so you go to Andrus, like the Andrus open gym and shit too. Yeah, or? I've been yeah. to Andrus. Uh, I've messed with Coach Gary Gully's. Uh, Gully, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah, I've been there. That was our Coach Gully was our our one of our assistants this, our senior year. But yeah, we, I mean, Jeff, we they were a little bit older than us, but Jeff, mm -hmm. uh, Eddie, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you know Rashad too. Yeah, um, uh, what do you look like? Uh, he's tall, tall, skinny. Uh, he's tall, yeah, tall, yeah, lanky. I might, I might, yeah. I might. I probably um, is the like is the hoop culture, bro? Is it? What's the difference between here and like other cities you go to? Like, do you do you recognize a lot of the people from the other cities, or it's just way too big to like? Because I feel like here you know who's like really hooping and like who's in the who's in the mix here, but like, what's it like in other cities? Would you say? Mm, so like, in other cities, like as far as like Texas or like what are we talking? Uh, about? Yeah, let's just say like in Houston, bro. Like, okay, so, do, you, do you hoop out there? Yeah, for yeah. sure. So Houston compared to here is dogs. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, all my guys, family, like, bro, it's, it's dogs out there, athletes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Not say it's not out here, but like, Can you put the, a little clo a little closer, just a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. There so go. it's a lot. It's a lot more. Um, that's good. Yeah. That's okay. Fair. So it's a lot. It's a lot more dogs. I would say, um, a lot. I think out here it's a little soft. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just just a little bit. Like, people be crying, but I mean, it's <laughs> cool over the years. Like since I've been here. It's cool. Like I hooped. Uh, I think I told you. What was it? What's today? I went Wednesday. We yeah. Had Beast. Okay. It was smooth, smooth runs, smooth uh -huh. runs. Definitely ran a gym though. Yeah. Gym. yeah do you have? Why. Did you go with anybody or like you? You. Uh... I went with my cousin's husband, and that's my first time meeting him. Oh, uh, okay. And then I seen some people in the gym like that who, like I said, I've, like I used to live here. So yeah. like, I hooped with people that was in the gym that I used to play with in different leagues or whatever. And um, it, it was actually like it's people that could hoop out there. Yeah. And one of my boys, my boy Josh, you know what I'm saying? He was out there. He's tough. He's in college right now. I think he's about to graduate. And then he had some big with him. But, yeah, it was just us three. We were just running. Yeah. That's dope, bro. What about – uh? yeah, because, I mean, when we – uh, I guess we, hoop, we hooped in high school. Mm -hmm. When we would go to, like, Dallas and, like, more um, – I would say, like, East Texas. Mm -hmm. It's for sure a different game, bro. Like, over there, it's a lot more – Faster pace, for too. Sure. Faster pace. Um, yeah. I would say people are more – more athletic too but then more it's just more comp i feel like it's just more people though yeah. as well like For sure. you know what i'm saying it's, it's more athleticism it's more like people are like real gritty but i mean it's cool people yeah. people i think i think it's just more people yeah honestly. what what about there in cali well how would you compare that okay so cali is different yeah Cali's different there's a lot of hoopers in cali but cali like the, the play styles i would say from out here to out there is different um i think it's more aggressive like down south compared to like cali oh okay especially like my era like coming out um but it's more like finesse, bro. Like people are nice and can shoot. Everybody can shoot and cut. Like mm. all my boys, we all train. Like everybody shoots. Yeah. Like, when, and I moved when I was in college. My first year I was in Alabama, and I went like more to the East Coast side playing people. Um, people didn't. They don't like really shoot. Yeah. A lot of people like a lot of my boys from New York. They can dribble a lot. You know what I'm saying? Boys got handles for days. Yeah. They will have you doing all like you feel me, but they got the oohs and the ahs. But like more people like West people can shoot. More East Coast, they more take go lay you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then Midwest like Texas down south. Um, it just depends. You get a little bit of both, but maybe balanced a little bit yeah. more balanced. That's crazy. Texas how, like, been the hoop state though for a yeah. minute though. Like it's been in Texas, been the hoop state. Yeah, but you grew up in in Los Angeles, you said right? Or no, in, no. So in, in Cali. Yeah. So I'm I was born in San Diego. Okay. So I grew up San Diego, uh, really SoCal. Mm -hmm. I moved around a little bit. Um, and I I did grow up in LA a little bit, but not for I grew up like uh, so partially San Diego and like the Valley. Okay. So like, where I'm from, I went to high school and stuff. We call it the dirt. The dirt. Okay. It's the AV. Uh, so where'd you go to high school at then? I went to high school in the Valley. In the Valley? Yeah. Okay. And you, like, you hooped out there. Did you play in college? Yeah. So, yeah. I played I play AAU. I played high school. I mm -hmm. played college. And then after college, um, I went, like, my first year, I was at a, I was at a D2. Uh-huh. And um, it was HCU. 
in Alabama. And then after that, I transferred to Houston, JUCO. Then went to a higher JUCO, higher level JUCO, D1 JUCO. And then after that, I joined the Army. Okay. I was really like, it was it was a crazy story, honestly. Like, I had I had signed to uh, Colorado, right? Mm-hmm. And then, I was, it's crazy. I was just talking to Eddie about this. Yeah. Right? So, he, he's, he's... You talked to him recently or what? Yeah, I, I just seen him. Like, yeah. that's what I was about to pull up to the show. He's telling me, he's like, yeah. He's like, he talked to me. I was like, you tell him, get on this. I was like, all right, bet, bet. I was like, yeah, I mess with it. I like, I like what you got going uh-huh. on. You know what I'm saying? I'm a fan. Appreciate it, bro. But, um, yeah, shout out to Eddie, man. Mm-hmm. Um, And I seen the other guy, too, that he had on here with the dreads. I can't remember his name. I just met him today. Oh, so Dante. So what's, what's his name? Sedante. Sedante. Yeah. Yeah. With they the were. Dread. Yeah. He has dreads, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I just see him too today. Oh, okay. That's dope. But um, yeah. So uh, what was I saying? So I had signed, bro. After I left Duke, or after no, my first year, after I left Alabama, right? I'm my people moved um to Houston, like my mom. So I moved to Houston, uh, transfer, and I was looking for a school like to go to, and then um, I was about to go to what was it, um. Colorado, like I said, I signed to the school in Colorado. Mm-hmm. It was a small, like, D1. But um, I had signed, and I got on because my homegirl from Cali, she, AU, she played on the girls' team. She got a scholarly. And then after my first year, like, I told her, I was like, bro, I'm trying to get up out of here. Like, Birmingham is not the place to mm-hmm. be. You feel me? Like, I had to get up out of there. Yeah. So, anyway, I ended up talking to her, got in contact with the coach, sent her some film. Uh, we talked. I really didn't have a visit. I was like, man, I'm just trying to go. Like, I, I just went off what she said, yeah. yeah, how it was, and I talked to some team, some uh, some players, and I was like, it's cool. I'm about to go over. I'm about to start. Like, I really don't care as long as I'm playing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So after that, uh, they school had called me. So we're in August now, right? It's over summer. I'm still looking at other schools, but I after I signed to them, I didn't. I was I was I was set. Mm-hmm. So like financial aid called me like, um, I want to say, a week before school starts because i was in houston mm-hmm. and me and my dad was gonna drive from houston to colorado like like 10 tor- like lucky like the trip i just made mm-hmm. um anyway so we packed up the car i'm lit bro i'm ready to go and then they said i owed like i want to say somewhere between like six to eight thousand like a year or something mm-hmm. i was like wow like yeah i'm on scholarship you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying like what are you talking about so i called my coach i'm like hey yo coach like final shade talking about i owe this i'm like mm-hmm. i'm like is there any way I can get like cover for this? Yeah, he was like, I gave you the most I can give you. You know, I gave you because I had twenty six thousand. That was my scholarship, like twenty six thousand or something. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, all right. So they were like, I was like, what do I have to do? He's like, just talk to them, see if they work out. Probably just get like a parent plus loan or something like that. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, cool. So I talked to my parents about it, and I was already on a parent plus loan. And then they were saying like, I take a, I could take a loan from a bank to um to pay for it, but then like the interest rate was so high and i talked to one of my older cousins he played in the league so i talked to him about it. he was like no nah, i don't do that mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying because he's like you're gonna owe so much more money on the back end once yeah. you graduate i was like dang so i ended up not even doing it and then long story short like that school ended up getting shut down anyway like they went Damn. bankrupt on some stuff so i was like <laughs> like a couple years like later after because i ended yeah. up, after that i was still stuck in houston so i had to find like i ended up going to a juco in houston uh luckily they were having trials at the school so i just went I ended up making the team, um, and I had – I told the coach, I was like, man, I, I just got here. Like, I'm not even from here. I'm from Cali. Like, you feel me? I just transferred from Alabama. Like, mm-hmm. So he was he was messing with me um, and some other guys because, you know, he, I guess he was kind of new too, low-key, but he had been there, like, I think like a year or two. So he wasn't that year that long. Uh, there that, young, uh, that long. Yeah. But um, after that, I uh, got on with them. I played that semester. I started uh, classes like late start. So I my class didn't start until three weeks after. Mm-hmm. So then I did that, and after that, um, that's when I transferred. Went to go visit at, at Navarro as like a higher JUCO. I'm not yeah. Part of it. So um, just a little intro. I mean, this is episode uh, 24. 24 okay. of the most vulnerable player. Yes, sir. Um, we're sitting down with Prince. What, what's your? Do you go just go by Prince or? Yeah, yeah. So like my handles and stuff is like Hype Man Prince. Prince. Yeah, that's like the brand. You yeah, feel me? And yeah. I have a photography and videography page. Cause you do that. Okay. Like with my YouTube and stuff. So yeah. I edit my own videos. Like, yeah. So everything I did, or and my cousin edited my first video when I started, mm-hmm. and my first video was actually out here in El Paso. Yeah. Was it the? Uh, wait, for, I I'll definitely want to get into that. But okay. how'd you come up with? Uh, where did the Hype Man come from? Hype Man Prince. <laughs> This is funny. Um, <laughs> so originally, bro, when I had first started, like when I first made like my Instagram, my name like back in the day in high school used to be like the Candy Man something fifteen, right? Because <laughs> like I used to sell in high school, yeah, but, like like candy, honey buns, slushies, like all type of stuff. So, oh, actual like, candy. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I did that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I sold all through that smoke. Yeah. Everybody, it was high and stuff. They knew me because <laughs> I had all the snacks. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. 
and it was legal. It was less less stress. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So damn, yeah. that's that's a crazy business move. Like you know, like you let the other dudes like handle like the actual like weed and shit, but. Mm-hmm. There's still a market for like the potheads too. They, oh, they yeah. want to eat some shit too. Like That's they a got pocket, the munchies. Bro. Yeah. On me. <laughs> I'm with all of it, bro. We in Cali too. Everybody's getting fa- loaded, bro. In high school, like, yeah. and I'm an athlete, so we couldn't smoke anyway. And people used to always think I was high, bro. And then one, we had one teammate. He smoked. After I seen what happened, I was like, yeah, bro. And then my mom, bro. Nah, it, <laughs> it wasn't gonna happen in my house. Yeah, bro. you feel me? No, but for sure. Um, yeah. So I, my name went from that, and then it went to Elite Underscore is like Prince Underscore. Now, if anybody knows that name, bro, they used to know me. Like, you know, know Elite me. Prince. Yeah, yeah, Elite Prince is like, <laughs> is, a, is a, is, I don't even remember. I had that name for like a minute. Yeah. I didn't change it to hype. I'm trying to really think. This is a good question. This mm-hmm. is a great question. Um, hmm, I want to say it was before 2019, because that's when I started my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was around. Somewhere around JUCO years, like 2017, 2018, around there, I came up with Hype Man Prince because I went from it was Elite Prince for like the longest, and then after that, I was like, okay, I'm tired of having these underscores and all this. Like, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying if I ever want to get my blue check, I just want to be one name, yeah, like no period, no like nothing. It's just, hard to find just a one single name, bro. Man, I'm telling yeah. you, and once you do, you gotta like write it out because mm-hmm. the moment if you switch it for like. A couple of days or something like yeah. back then, like they didn't have that rule. It had to be like fourteen days now, but before if you switched it, like somebody got it, you yeah, couldn't use it. So luckily, I was just thinking and like I, I just try to think like what what fits me and what like fits my personality type. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I always feel like I was I've always been a hype man. Like even when I knows me, I've always been like the life of the party or like people always had me at events. Like in high school, I used to like uh, of course I played sports. But then also, like, I would host, like, different events, like the rallies and stuff. You know, in high school? That yeah, they yeah. Have, like, the pep rallies and shit. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, the dance team stuff, because I was, like, a funny guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, I have, like, a sense of humor. People always ask me, like, to, like, would ask me to do stuff. And I never had a problem speaking. I'm very, like, confident, very outgoing, very, yeah. like, you know. Extra kind of per- yeah. yeah. So, kind of, you know what I'm saying? And I can kind of fit in really mm-hmm. anywhere. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, so that, I just came with hype man. I was like, bro, I, I've, people have called me that, so I was like, yeah. I'm just so even when you're hooping, you're like the one that's like, yeah, like just yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm high energy, yeah. bro. I'm like high energy, yeah. like re- really high energy. Uh-huh. Yeah, facts. That's good, bro. So yeah. Um, what what made you? So how'd you get into YouTube, bro? So 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 from high school, you were kind of just mainly focused on hooping. That was like your thing. Like you wanted to take that as far as possible. Uh, or what did you have in mind, like when you graduated, basically, like for your future? Mm, so I'm not gonna lie bro I didn't have a plan like I just wanted to hoop that Mm -hmm. was was really like the dream for real yeah still is low key but I mean put on the back burner but um yeah that was that was it it was hooping it it was literally church Mm -hmm. hoops and that was it and I was like that that was that was me bro I Mm -hmm. I didn't do nothing I didn't really like I didn't really care you know what I'm saying I didn't really I didn't want to be in the house, mm-hmm. and I used to work out all the time. Like that was it. I used to, but I was so involved with like school and like basketball, and I play I play other sports too. I play football. I did track, mm-hmm. um, but like my passion, everything has always been basketball. Was first, so like, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Really basketball and football, but then as I started getting older, I really was like I I, I had this. I just thought about. I was like, bro, when I get in college. These niggas are huge. <laughs> you feel me? Like yeah. niggas are on steroids. So yeah. I'm just like. Do I really want to get hit around all the time? Yeah, I'm kind of. I'm kind of. Sure. I got a nice jumper. I'm kind of nice. Like, let me just pick one. And yeah. my cousin, he played in the league in football. So like, I used to go to the camps. I started getting better, but like, it just. I don't know basketball. Mm-hmm. I think I played longer. Yeah. I think I was just naturally better at it for sure. But um, the only thing I could think of, like, I just wanted to do. I was always good with business, so I wanted to be like a business major. Yeah. And kind of like own my own type of business. I didn't know what it was at the time because I had a hard time trying to decide on one thing i felt like i was very versatile very good at like a lot of different things um i always liked acting like right now i'm in acting school um so i was always good at performing never had like a real problem doing that um mm-hmm. but like i said basketball was like first mm-hmm. so like that was it just i was using basketball just to get to college you know what I'm yeah saying? and then the only other thing i had was like my mom was shoving like oh you're if you don't you're going to the military like i was mm-hmm. like no i'm not i'm not going to the military yeah and i was like that whole thing she took me like my senior year to take the ASVAB. I failed it on purpose. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And how, how'd you come across uh, making YouTube videos? I was at JUCO. Mm-hmm. I was at JUCO. Um, 20, I want to say like 17, 2018. 
2017, 2017. You know, that's when, like, really people started, like, like the first couple of content creators, when they came out, like, the whole YouTube, when I was first, everybody was like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really know what it was. Yeah. Like, it was just like, you know what I'm saying? People, I heard about it, but I didn't really know what it was. Mm-hmm. I just, I was big on Snapchat. Yeah. Like, I used to do a lot. Like, just a lot, bro. Just on your stories and stuff? Yeah, on my stories, but I was getting, like, thousands of views. Like, oh, shit. So, people were like, do you have, like, are you a YouTuber? Are you? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what, is, what are you talking about? What is a, what yeah. is a YouTuber? Yeah. Right? So, I get back home. I'm in Houston. Um, and, actually, my sister, she tells me, she's like, oh, these YouTubers in town. They're out at a church. Da, da, da. I want you, can you take me and go get a meet and greet? Can, I want their autograph. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. I just got back home from like from school. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I'm yeah. like, and I, at the it was time, still it was still early on in like the yeah, content creating. Not age, facts, right? but they're one of the people. So I don't know. You ever heard of like Chris and Queen? Like back then, that's uh, what it was. Like you nah. know Queen Naja? Or you heard, have you, Queen Naja? Nah, you I don't her? think so. You heard of her? Yeah. Clarence yeah, Clarence. So yeah, so before before she even got with Clarence, you know, she was with Chris or whatever. That whole little episode. But anyway. So I ended up meeting them through my sisters because she wanted me to take them, and then I didn't. We didn't ended up making it to it to the mall because they ended up getting kicked out or something for disturbing the peace. But then I come Sunday, I go to church, and she's at my church. I'm just like, oh, so they were all there, like yeah. them and some other people that I seen. Um, so I ended up meeting them. Uh, everybody was taking pictures, but I didn't know who they was. And then I seen Chris in the gym, like hooping. We was hooping. Mm-hmm. That's how I, really. That's how I met. I met a lot of content creators like that too, like just hooping in the gym. Yeah, yeah like even some of my friends right now, like. We all were like in college hooping, and then we just like I started one. My homie uh, D Paul, um, he he has a channel. He started. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out to him. Uh, my boy Joel, uh, and like I said, Chris Queen at the time. So I met them, and they 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 were like on that. So I was like, mm-hmm. dang. So I started I started being around them, hanging out, going out. You know what I'm saying? Just being around like you know making friends or whatever. Yeah. Just being around them, and then I kind of I was gonna join their team before like they ended up breaking up and had their whole little escapade yeah. so yeah but after that yeah that, that's how i got started and then i didn't know what i wanted to do either i was like dang if i start what i'm gonna do like I, i'm trying to think i hoop i seen people doing public interviews talking to people and me like i'm good with people right yeah. so i wanted to do something like i can interact so i thought about it and i started doing i just tried to public interview out something easy because people a lot of people were doing pranks doing different things like that was a big thing pranks pranks yeah but it was kind of hard because i didn't really know anything yet i learned like i said as i went i learned so I did. I knew I had to do my intro video. I did my intro video. My cousin uh, recorded it for me at my auntie's house, and uh, and that's how I got started. And then, yeah, and uh, then then was some of your first videos the public, like the public interviews. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah so my first videos like that was the easiest thing. Like that was the only thing I knew I could do. I didn't have to like get anybody or get people or like try to use some type of. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Use a, uh, like an object or like, yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't need anything yeah. besides myself, yeah. a camera and a mic. Yeah, for sure. I had it. Mm-hmm. So once I got that and it's crazy, I could have started a long time ago if I knew what I knew now about yeah. like, I could have started off my phone, bro. A lot of people don't know that. You could literally start. Yeah. YouTube Especially with the camera, phone. the quality of the phone now, bro. It's, yes. it's insane. Even back then I had it. So when I was thinking about all this, I, I remember I had an iPhone eight, yeah, eight plus. I could have used that. Mm-hmm. Like literally I could have used that recorded. But I had that, and I had, like, another phone, so I would use that as, like, the mic. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. like, whoever was holding, like, I used the camera, and then they would, I would yeah. go back and forth. But, yeah. But then when I came back from Houston, um, I, after I got back from, like, training and stuff, I got stationed out here, right? I went back to Houston, talking with my homies, and I was like, I'm going to start a YouTube channel, bro. Like, people keep talking about it, and I mess with people that do it. Like, I was like, I can do exactly what they do, but yeah. do what I want to do, and I can pop. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So... That's where I came from, and then yeah. What I, questions were you asking? What kind of questions were you asking? I, I was wild, bro. Yeah. Um, the first, let me think. <laughs> the first video I had out here, um, and I did it out here too. I did yeah. it on Cincy, bro. Like, That's like one of the best spots in my yeah, opinion, bro. Facts. Like, it's toxic as fuck out there, bro. You get some really good, like, some yeah. good interactions. <laughs> yeah, nah, fact. Everybody drunk, and yeah. then too, bro. Back then, like 2018, 2019, like, bro, Paso was lit. Like, people yeah. didn't know it slept on. Like, yeah, it was lit. But I was like, I think I did, I did a drunk truth or dare. Oh, and I literally, I just made it up, bro. Yeah. We was going out, we was drinking. I was like, I don't know what to do. I was like, you know what? I'm just shoot the dare. I was like, I'm gonna do drunk edition because I had like a whole bottle of like. Would you? Then. Were you drinking too? Yeah, I was. Yeah. No, I was drunk. I had a whole. <laughs> I, had, I, I had a yeah. whole bottle of uh, Crown Apple back yeah. then. Yeah, that was when. That's all you could do. That's when I first got in the army, yeah. bro. We always lit. I used to be drinking. Bro, those army, the army dudes, like they show out here, bro. Like y'all, nah, y'all, move, y'all. Y'all are deep for sure. Facts, <laughs> facts, bro. I ain't gonna lie, we, bro, we popped out. Yeah, nah, facts. The whole company, bro, popped out. Man, we like 10, 12, 20 deep, yeah. bro. I swear, I was, bro. So look, we're recording on the, on the, you know, since he on the strip, right? 
I have my man's recording the video. Luckily, I had like a light or something, bro. It's like you see me, a light, and I'm in front, and then um, it's like a whole the whole block of people behind me, like behind the camera. That's everybody that came with me. Damn. Like so, I, everybody you have someone me. holding a light and everything. Oh shit. Yeah. So back then, I'm trying to think, but people had their phones. Like as soon as like uh, I would get a girl, let's say I get a girl right, she come up and do an interview. I'm like, hey, I'm about to ask you like these questions, blah blah, blah on YouTube, blah, blah blah. So she's like, all right, cool. And be her and friends, bro. People like my homies that came, they had to, they had, they pulled out their phones, they're recording, like you know what I'm saying, like mm-hmm. tagging me on like on Instagram, Snapchat, like yeah. whatever. So and when people see that, mind you, I'm not. This is my friend. Like, I just got here, right? So nobody for one, nobody out here was doing that. Like yeah. I was like the only, I was the only YouTuber here. Yeah. And then, um, so when people see that like across the street, they looking like who's like what's going mm-hmm. on? They just see a whole bunch of niggas, a light <laughs> and yeah. a camera. I'm talking to some girls, like yeah. so it was cool. Security was cool, and then I went to, I think it shut down now. I don't remember the name of it, bro. But right there by, uh, what's the street, bro? Where, where was the, what was the black club, like, on, on Cincy? Cincy? Everybody went to, across, across from, uh, across from, uh, uh, what's it called, bro? I haven't been here in so long. Uh, everybody used to go, it starts with a C. Is it college dropout? Chino? Okay, okay. No, okay. Chino? Ac- ac- across from Chino. Across from Chino. Across from Chino. It was right there, and it's across from college dropout, bro. It's right across the street. With an R? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And oh, I think right, I shut right, down. Uh, fuck. Um, and it was right across the street, bro. Yeah, you know how to... No, no, no. No? no. It gets ghetto, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It gets a little ratchet, right? You're like, it's a little ratchet. Right, 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 right. Route 66? No. No, 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 no. no. It's right next to Fade and to the left of Fade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Fade is right over there. Um, Crawdaddies? No. No. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> yo, Crawdaddies is there too, bro. Um, it's right at the light. You know where the police hang out, bro? Like, you know where Cheetos at? The Cheetos? Okay, you know where Cheetos at, right? Yeah, You know yeah, the police yeah. hang out right there. And you know, it's a it's a rail. It's a black rail right here. Okay. And then yeah. on the edge, it's another one. I don't remember Fuck. the name of it, bro. Yeah, I'm sure it'll come. Yeah, but... It was next nah, to nah, Champagne? Yeah. Next yeah, to champagne. it's right there, bro. You're, you're naming everything on the <laughs> except block for except the- for... <laughs> he used to work right there, bro, too. Yeah, he looks familiar, bro. I think yeah. I've seen him before. I don't, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure. And I used, to, I used to be a bouncer, bro. Like, I worked with Josh and... uh. You know Josh, Big Josh. Josh. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used to be. Yeah, yeah, him, him, him. Yeah, Big Blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah, yeah, facts. I used to be with him. That's like my big bro. Yeah, uh, same bar as him because when well, he moved around, he worked at a lot of bars. So. Nah, facts, yeah. facts. Yeah, um, there's. A, I feel like since he has like a little community, bro. Like if you work on Cincy, I feel like you kind of know. Like I yeah. know you when you go back, Curry. I feel like you. You kind of say hi to the same people type shit, bro. Yeah, it's a family for yeah. sure. And then like even with uh, who, who's those people out here that do? Dang, I can't really. You know Maine? Okay, you know Maine? Maine. Y'all heard of Maine? She uh, GFM. Y'all heard of GFM? Yeah. No, okay, so like know. that was like I think the only like black promoters I was out here. Uh-huh. So I used to that when I started working like when I got back I started doing security I was working with them like when okay. I got back from Afghanistan yeah I started doing that a little bit damn so, so yeah. do you um. Were reels a thing when you were like first doing no, the interviews? No, 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 that wasn't a thing. So you're like, just posting them on YouTube? Yeah, I yeah. was just doing, I was just doing, I would post on YouTube, like regular videos, and then I would also post on, because back then, what, 2019, let me go back. I will post on my Instagram yeah. and Snapchat. So I post like clips, or I, I, what I would do, I would make short, like 30 second, like a preview video, and then I would just post that on everything. Oh, Snapchat, okay, yeah, yeah. Instagram, uh, I even put I even made some on YouTube and I would like delete the video like yeah. later. But yeah, that was it. it was so you're getting some pretty oh, good on Twitter and Twitter. Putting some pretty good interactions from from those. Yeah, bro. Yeah. A lot of people I ain't gonna lie, and surprisingly, a lot of people was rocking with me, bro. Like my yeah. first video, I hit like a K. Damn. And I had like a hundred, two hundred followers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the thing was, bro, so I had like my little group of people. We called ourselves MHC, you feel me? Uh huh. Um, most hated crew. Or no, no, my high club. That's 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 the name of it. Okay. I didn't make the name. I was added to the group when I got okay, here. Yeah, but that yeah. was my group who I was with. MHC. Yeah. That was us. We had a handshake and everything, bro. It was legit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, we I it was so it was us. We go out to the mall. I did probably send my second video. I was at Sea Vista Mall. Uh-huh. Did that. Um, what was it? And when I would see somebody, bro, I'm like, hey, do you watch YouTube? I'm like, hey, I'm a YouTuber. Hey, like, subscribe, like, mm. tap in, check me out. Yeah. And people were like, all right, cool. What's your, you know, what I'm saying, what's your name, blah blah. blah. But literally, I'm doing that. Whenever we're like, let's say me, like, all three of us right now, we go out and we're at, like Chick Fil A, and I see like anybody, a girl, boy, I don't care. I'm like, hey, you watch YouTube? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, hey, I have a channel. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, tap in. See, that's dope, bro. Cause yeah, I've always been a little bit like timid in the way where like I have a YouTube channel. Sometimes I don't even say I have a channel, bro. Sometimes like, but that's cool how you like kind of. You put yourself out there, yeah, like self promo, bro. You gotta, 
you gotta you gotta like for one bro like let me see, like if if i had a product right and i think it's dope and i and you know what i'm saying I, I love it or whatever but let's say i don't say nothing to you or like i don't let's say i come to you and i have no confidence mm-hmm. no confidence in what whatever it is i'm selling right whatever i'm trying to pitch to you how more likely are you going to be able, like want to buy or yeah buy? exactly yeah. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i'm coming to you yeah, i'm i'm i got a youtube i'm the hottest thing smoking like what are yeah. you talking about bro you <laughs> feel me and i got one subscriber but you about to be my second yeah. one tap it right now yeah. they all oh, what Not and i'm coming sure. with that same energy like i'm talking to you i'm coming with that same energy like yeah. oh snap well, who, what do you do like <laughs> what, what, what is it let me yeah. let me see Not so yeah for sure no, so, that makes yeah. sense, bro. So how how do you? Because you have quite a bit of following on on IG now, bro. How how did yeah. you kind of accumulate that? Like, where did that come from? Man, I'm gonna just say like it took time for real. Yeah. And for one, two, being a male, like a, a guy, like it's it's a lot it's harder, tough, bro. Man. Yeah, bro, I ain't gonna lie, it's hard, bro. It's hard, like unless you're like famous already or like some type of you know what I'm saying. Obviously, but yeah. coming from the ground up, bro. For one, stay consistent. Two, like. Stay consistent, yeah. bro. Be persistent. And then, like, you just got to keep posting, bro. And then, too, like, I would say whatever you're doing, find out, like, let's say whatever video you put out, whatever community you reach, whatever, like, people you touch, listen to what they say in those comments, bro. Like, really read them. Sometimes I don't respond, but, I mean, I do respond more. Like, engage with your audience is what mm-hmm. I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, like, engage with them. Let's say they want to see you do talk about, I don't know, bro. Like Hooters versus like Twin Peaks or something. Yeah. Like talk about that. Somebody say in the comments, "Oh, you do it as a video," and then boom, they're gonna be like, "Oh, he he did what I said." Mm, da, da, da. Yeah. Like, hey guys, look look at this. Check this. You know what I'm and saying? And then they'll send it to like everybody. Yeah. It, yeah. So like I would try to say like like as much as I network, bro. And a lot of times people like don't really like, especially our generation, like right, like shaking like old school. I'm very like old school. I, I think old school and our generation is very. If you put both of those together, of like the culture of how going about networking, shaking those hands. You know what I'm saying? Sitting down face to face and talking to people like people like you know what I'm saying, people tap in more as opposed to like, let's say I just sent you a link mm-hmm. on the you know what I'm saying? Yeah. On on the gram. We never really talked on the phone. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like let's say me right now, we didn't talk on the phone. You just kinda we just texting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I would feel like a little like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, My phone sure. calls more like more more secure, more comfortable. I didn't have a conversation sure. with him. I didn't met this man and seen him in person, shook his hand. I know this, that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, for sure. So you like you that. you utilize like kind of more like old school principles but mm-hmm. the fact that you like we have this social media now it's like it's even more powerful because you should you could just reach that much more people right mm-hmm. um yeah that's dope so like what what would you say is like what is like because obviously consistency is everything mm-hmm. um but as far as like the type of content you want to do mm. does it matter for like a, a dude or like or like let's just i say do because it, it is harder to like grow as a i feel like as a as a male nah like, it is why do you sure. think that is um sex sales sex sales sex sales niggas yeah. is horny yeah true sex sales niggas is horny bro <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah at the end of the day like think about it bro like as much as power as women have bro at the end of the day they wouldn't do nothing we wouldn't praise yeah you know what i'm saying like think about it if, if i'm not putting my time my money and energy into this whatever this girl's doing yeah, no, why, for sure. Why would she keep doing it? No, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Now, my, granted, she has a mind of her own, but I'm just saying, like, if if me, if me, us as men, if we're not, like, praising that or, like... Reinforcing it, you know? Yeah, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? It's not it's not going to go anywhere because yeah. nobody's going to support it. So it's yeah. like... But, yeah, I think that's why. That's that's a big reason, I yeah. would say, right there. And then, too, like... Yeah, that's really it, bro. I, I think that's that's the only thing for yeah. that. And then as a male, like... if So for men, like, if you're a male, like, if you're not funny... um somewhat attractive um have some type of uh like whatever your niche is um i i would say it's gonna be a lot harder for you do you have to do something interesting or like yeah. it, it would be more so like men support men like you have mm-hmm. to do something that men will support because you think about it a woman and that's the other thing too like women bro they support the heck out of women bro yeah. like a girl you'll see she does cosmetology she's doing lashes bro i see like 20 of her homegirls pushing nah, her like i'm like sure. dang yeah and you the comment section is like crazy bro, bro. comments go <laughs> dumb <laughs> Yeah. Bro, female, she got like 300 followers, bro. She got a thousand. I'm like, how? Like, what the? You feel me? How does that happen? Nah, but no cap. That, that's, that, I think that's a big reason. And then, too, like, too, like for us men, bro, men are very prideful, bro. I was that's, just thinking that's that, That's something bro, yeah. like women don't even have for her. That's yeah. really a man thing. Like, but women are competitive as well, though. They are, but they're like, they're sneaky, bro. Mm. They're real, like, low key. You know what I'm very, saying? Like, yeah. Yeah, like, like, yeah, it's competitive, <laughs> but like, 
it's not they're not real confrontational type. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's more like, okay, I'm gonna play nice right now today, but I'm gonna do something to like yeah. fuck you up to the next time or something. You know what I'm saying? Like for sure. Us like if we're gonna go at it, bro, I'm, we're going at it right yeah. now. And it's yeah, that that's just what it is. It's it's up there and it's stuck. Like for sure. It's not like this back and forth. Some people do, but typically not. Yeah. And I, f- I feel like maybe with dudes, like, I think for sure, like, we support each other, mm-hmm. but it's more, it's definitely more a little bit ego involved. Like, if we, yeah. if we've never met mm-hmm. and, like, you're not really, like, that cool, it's not like, you're just yeah. not going to randomly comment on some dudes, like, uh, unless you guys have interacted before, I feel like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because then people are like, well, it's the first thing to say, oh, why, why are you on this dick? You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, nah, yeah. Bro, chill out. I'm not, <laughs> it's not even like that. You feel me? And then, a lot of times too, like men are childish, bro. We're childish. I ain't gonna lie. We're childish. <laughs> um, women, I feel like it just depends. Like they, they, they just have that. I would say they have that more down pack as far yeah. as like supporting. For I think sure. nowadays, now more nowadays, I think it's more open. Like men, we more open to like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Be more like cool because how I look at it now, bro. What I see in the streets for real, or like whenever I go out and I hear stuff, especially when I was doing security, bro. I was breaking up a lot of female fights, like. Mm. Niggas wasn't even fighting no more. Yeah. Guys come in there, everybody cooling. They smoking, chilling, drinking. Yeah. Females are, nah, this my nigga. Da, da, da. I was with yeah. this. I'm like, yo, what's going on? You think it was always like that? Or you think it's a modern, like modern society? Nah, it's a, it's a it's a new age, bro. Yeah. It's a new age nowadays, bro. Um, roles have definitely reversed. Yeah. If you if you feel what I'm saying, like, and it's some is good. I feel like personally some is good, but some also is just bad, bro, because it's like some things that men do. But also it's the whole thing with like women are just so empowered. Like the whole feminine thing is, is a big thing, right? Yeah. So like a lot of things that's the agenda that's pushed out is like we, women don't need a man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying it's a lot of single mothers and not say like single mothers are like it's a bad thing or you can't do it. But like that's not the way it was intended. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's, it's if, if you lay down together with two people. It's supposed to be two people yeah, raising that. For sure. You know what I'm saying? It's but, not the, even though you said you, they can do it, it's just not yeah, the most ideal situation exactly, for that exactly. child, you know? It's, it's not. Because, yeah. bro, just like that child needs his mother, the child needs his father, bro. Yeah. Oh, off. He needs a father, bro. Mm-hmm. Even if the mother and father aren't together, still need a daddy, bro. No, for sure. Still need a daddy, bro. Yeah. But yeah. And yeah, I, I agree with that, like, the whole, like, because I think we're very, uh, we're, we're very, a, a lot more independent nowadays yeah, facts, facts, facts. both men and women uh inflation's crazy <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> yo inflation's crazy bro <laughs> nah <laughs> but, not for real but i think we're independent but mm-hmm. even though that in, in some ways that is good as far as like i guess achieving like just being more focused on what we're doing just trying to build stuff but at the same time bro like you get to a point i feel like a certain age where if you're not with somebody if you're not settling down like you can't tell me that's not that's not gonna you're gonna feel a little bit empty if you haven't really established like how many how many really happy people do you know like at 45 or 50 that are like single no kids bro i mean maybe but like at the same time like like do you do you think that they're really fulfilled in that or like do you know anybody like i'm sure there's some but like for the most part bro i would i would think that that's just kind of natural evolution of a human no just having someone yeah, I think yeah. that's the natural like order, bro. Like yeah. e- even with animals, you feel me? The wildlife they they have families. They they multiply. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So like with us, like w- w- humans, we're never meant to be alone, bro. Nobody's meant to be alone. I don't care what you say. Like, yeah. Nobody's meant to be alone for the rest of their life. Like no matter how much work you do, no matter how much you're involved in your community, like bro, you when you go home, people want to go home to love. People want to go home to peace. You know what I'm saying go around like it's good for your mental health too as well bro even even life like even the army bro we don't we don't do anything by ourselves we go in pairs like mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you're when you're on the battlefield you have a battle buddy you know what i'm saying you're in Afghanistan, like overseas like you're deployed and has this area you have a battle buddy like it's it's there's always a pair bro nobody's meant to like just be by yourself mm-hmm. now i'm not gonna say you can't do it like like i said anything's possible bro 2024 happy new year <laughs> anything's possible bro but 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 I don't think no, we're not intended. I think everybody should have somebody. You know what I'm saying? Now, mind you, somebody dies. You know what I'm saying? Natural causes, but yeah, I think people. I think I think people do better too with having a supportive partner or spouse or something. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, because then at the same time, like you can't be with your mommy and daddy forever. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta leave the nest at some time. For sure. Some point, you know what I'm saying? Or your parents they're gonna get old and die once at some point. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So like, even if you did stay at home, like. You're gonna you're gonna need somebody, some type yeah, of companion. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Do you have that somebody right now? Mm. Ah, <laughs> me with a good question. Uh I have somebody. I'll uh-huh. say I do have somebody. Um Yeah, I have somebody. Yeah. I have somebody. It's it's cool. it's 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 really new. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially like this year. I'm really like 
I, I like it. Mm-hmm. I like it so far. You feel me? Um, yeah, that's good. So, yeah, I do have somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Not I, just, facts, I was just facts. curious, but uh, how do you feel like um, like dating? Uh, even though like you do, I like, have somebody right now. But mm-hmm. when you were dating, how do you feel like it, it changed? Um, or like, what are maybe some obstacles you had seen as far as like dating nowadays? Or what do you think, like, uh, as a society? Now, mind you, I'm still, changed. like, fresh in the dating pool. Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. I'm not, like... So, so okay. It's, it's like, not official, but it's... Yeah, like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Not yet, but it's not... It's only just because of the time. Like, yeah, just, I feel you. Yeah, yeah, We're still, like, getting yeah, to know each other. for sure. You know what I'm saying? But it's... I have, like, it's somebody there. But yeah. anyway... um, You said what I think the difference is? Or just, or, like, well, as a society, like, how do you feel, like, dating has changed um, in today's society? Like from like with social media and just mm. what, what what makes it hard because i mean i think a lot of people struggle facts facts um so social media for one that's that's the big thing like mm-hmm. social media people like how it is nowadays people put too much in social media like social media is the, just what is entertainment bro it's literally entertainment depending on what you do on social media it can be a business it can mm-hmm. be a way to, to market your like your business network and especially now like you kind of need it low-key and that's yeah. the way we get our news across like I don't read the newspaper, bro. I barely watch TV. I'm on Instagram, Snap, like you know what I'm saying. I see my phone a lot, so um, excuse me. But um, I would say I think it's a lot harder now, just on the simple fact like people to me nowadays don't they do stuff for the images, they do stuff for like the clout, for the for like society, for like the approval of somebody else. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Like I, I might have a girl, or you might have a the girl might have a boyfriend, but they don't really know that person. They just tell, oh, yeah, I got a man. Oh, yeah, I got a girl. You know what I'm saying? I got this. I got that. But whole time, you got, like, four or five, six side hoes. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Girls included. Like, I got a man to do this, that, and the third. But then it's like you go home to your dude, and then, or you go home to your woman, and you just not even talking. Y'all mm-hmm. just on your phones. Y'all just going through the motion. Y'all really like roommates. For, yeah. Like, dry roommates. And just having sex. Mm-hmm. Making babies with somebody you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, bro, for sure. put your phone down. You know what I'm saying? I, I think people don't really get to know the person that they really with. Or people just get in these little situations. You know what I'm saying? And then next thing we know, it's toxic. That's a big thing. Everybody wants to do this. Run up a bag. Just try to... I think what people do nowadays, though, they always try to get something out of somebody. Or everybody's so afraid of being hurt, right? We're all, we, we've are all we all been hurt. Everybody's yeah. had the hurt. Bro. We've all been like through something with somebody else. But a lot of people are afraid to put their foot forward or be vulnerable mm-hmm. first because yeah. they're so worried about the next person, like what they're going to do. Like, let's yeah. say, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm with this girl, right? But I can't really give myself to her because I'm thinking of how she's going to try to hurt me. But I really want to be with this girl, but I'm afraid, too afraid she's going to hurt me. So I do something to protect myself or like, I, I don't put like all my eggs in a basket, but I kind of don't fully give myself up just in case of like I see her in the streets. So I'm like, oh yeah, she's hoeing. Oh yeah, she out there. Mm-hmm. I ain't tripping anyway because I got such 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 right. But at the same time, while you're doing that, bro, you're really not committed to one person. Now you're just going around mm-hmm. in the streets all the time. Now mind you, that's what you want to do. Go ahead. But like as you get older, as time keeps going, bro, you're gonna look up one day, sit there, you're 45, and you've been running the streets your whole 20s <laughs> and 30s. Like nigga, what? You didn't yeah. build nothing with nobody. Like yeah. literally, bro. I think that's the biggest problem. That's right deep, there. bro. That's the biggest that, problem. That's what. And everybody's yeah. afraid. Like, bro, you can't be afraid. Like, going, going wrong, bro. We all been hurt. Like, you're gonna get hurt, bro. If people stop trying to be afraid, like, oh, I've been hurt. This happened. This happened. Okay, that's that one person, bro. It's so many people in the world. I don't get me wrong. It's a lot of people, but you got for one, you gotta look where where are you finding these people? Two, where are you going? And what's their background? You know what I'm saying? That's why I said you gotta get to know people. You gotta ask questions. You gotta spend time with these folks. You know what I'm saying? Like. When you're talking to somebody, bro, I hate the one thing I hate when I talk to a female, bro. We sitting there texting, what you doing? I'm sitting there talking to you, trying to start a conversation. For one, I hate texting. Mm-hmm. I hate texting, bro. Like, if I'm going to talk, I'm going to just call your phone. Cool. That's, that's, one, that's, that's one thing right there yeah. f- to stay at all. Everybody wants to be pen pals. <laughs> Where they do nah, that at? Cap, yeah. You want to be my pen pal? Like, bro, what I look like? I'm not in boot camp no more, bro. You know what I'm saying? I ain't locked up. Like, <laughs> bitch, you better pull up or you better call me. Like, what yeah. the heck? So, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'm, you feel me? So, that's one thing. And then, too, bro, like, people got to be intentional and deliberate. What they trying to do, you feel me? You step to a lady, bro. Be whatever you want, whatever it is, just be stand on that. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Stand on that and then also be upfront with her. 
let her make a decision. We all try to manipulate, and people be trying to be like, you know what I'm saying, narcissists and stuff. Like, bro, that's not cool, bro. You sitting here playing with somebody's life. Mm-hmm. That's somebody's daughter, bro. You, you, I know so many niggas, bro. They see a bad female, right? And be like, oh, I'm going to get her pregnant. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, I'm about to get her pregnant. She's so bad. I'm just going to get her pregnant. I'm going to go. Nigga, you sound retarded. <laughs> you, what, how do you? What do you? You know nothing about her besides she's bad. Yeah. Pretty doesn't pay bills. Pretty doesn't know how to raise a child. Pretty doesn't know how to. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is that? Like, what is that gonna do, bro? Pretty can only take you so far. Nah, for so sure. So I think that's one thing. If people actually just take the time, and then two, a lot of people don't know themselves, bro. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know themselves, but they sit here trying to be with other people and try to find some type of. Approval or some type of love that they missed as a child or whatever point in their life from this other person. It's not my job to make you happy. It's not her job to make you happy. You know what I'm saying? We both are happy or we both are um, healed and be peaceful and we bring that together and then we coexist and then we create something new out of our happiness and whatever we got going on in each other's lives. You see what I'm saying? So that's one thing. Like that's that's a big thing right there, bro. A lot of people don't love themselves. A lot of people are uh, hurt out here, you know what I'm saying, and get healed. And we all do, you know what I'm saying, take care of your mental health um, for that, for one. Um, so I think the more you work on yourself, the better things will come that you attract. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? For sure. So <clears throat> instead of going out chasing women or chasing, like, money, find some purpose with your life. Find out what you like to do. And then as you going in, stepping in your purpose – you're going to naturally attract and find what you need in your life, and God's going to provide that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, my bad. I dropped a lot of Nah, nah, that, that was yeah, crazy. Fault, uh, yeah, for sure. I definitely agree, bro, with uh, mm-hmm. that's kind of what I've experienced with a lot of who I've talked to is, like, mm-hmm. a lot of the, like, everybody, ha- like, has some trauma, bro. Mm-hmm. And you can almost kind of sense it, bro. You can almost tell the, just the way certain people move with you, mm-hmm. especially if you've, you've seen that in a lot of people yeah yeah but i mean i could sit here and say too there's i mean it's it's changed the way i move sometimes Mm -hmm. but i think the thing is just being aware of that like Mm -hmm. you notice yourself kind of falling into that pattern of behavior right yeah of you like kind of shielding yourself Mm -hmm. you just have to remind yourself like bro what what is that going to get me right what if i don't actually just put myself out there like Mm -hmm. fully open my heart up and like you said bro you might get hurt but like like there's so many people out there that um that are different yeah yeah and you, it builds up and bro also it builds up like a i ain't gonna lie bro putting like especially me bro I ain't gonna, i'm not scared to get cut i didn't mean cut so many times and, I, and, <laughs> and I, you gotta be a strong person you see what i'm saying yeah. and you gotta be mentally like tough and it also like bro you you go out there enough but you gonna have some confidence mm-hmm. i'm gonna tell you that right now you're gonna you're gonna build up some character yeah. you know what i'm saying you're gonna find out something about yourself like dang i didn't i didn't know i could do that i didn't know i could you know you didn't step out start walking on your own you running now Going up to girls, talking to them, they shut you down. So what? Move to the next. Like, ooh, swoo. You have know what you I'm have you always been like that? Like, kind of. Uh, I mean, obviously, I've like, probably been confident, but just mm-hmm. being able to go up to really anybody and just talk to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Even when I was little, like even when I was just some regular stuff. My mom tell me like, so my sister had cancer, right? So yeah. we used to go to, like these different events or whatever. And I would meet like a lot of people that are like famous, like actors, celebrities. And I didn't shook these people's hands. And whatever event, it's called like it was back in Cali, so it's like called Relay for Life. Mm-hmm. And so Relay for Life is like for um, pediatrics, like with any cancer, like survivors and um, patients, families, anyone that had cancer with their child. It's like a community, yeah, per se. So anyway, and um, and it's called Make a Wish. That's called Make a Wish Foundation. Relay for Life is like an event, but same thing, two foundations. Um, so uh, what about say? So yeah, when I was little, bro. Um, like I said, I grew up in church when I was a lot younger, so I dealt with like deal with, with people. And then my mom, I used to travel a lot, but I was always very like outgoing. But also too, I was very like by myself. Like you know, what I'm saying being a first child, uh, my mom said like I was one of the kids. Like I could, I would, let's say she's teaching a classroom because she's a teacher. Um, I'll be sitting over there, right? She let's say she's working like right now. I'll be sitting over there. I'll be playing by myself, cooling. Mm-hmm. Like don't get me wrong, much as I like people, bro. I like a lot of alone time, bro. I need yeah. I need my own because, bro, being around people, bro, is very draining. Yeah, and for, for sure. a person like me, like my type of energy that I bring, bro, like people suck me dry. <laughs> I have to learn that, bro. I have to learn how to be a little bit more reserved. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, all right, stop being so like accessible to people. Yeah, but um, yeah, for sure, bro. I grew up. I was um very just myself. I uh-huh. really didn't care what people thought. I, it was a certain time when I was younger. I used to care. I used to. I used to react all the time right so let's say somebody do something to me i just react i just 
don't think I just react And people used to like Tease me or mess with me Because they know They can get a reaction out of me Right mm-hmm. But me I'm thinking I'm defending myself Or whatever Like let's say Somebody would say something And I just react to, Let's say you say Something about my mom Or whatever I'll just react to you I was getting in trouble For fighting You know what I'm saying I was, I was always been like Real aggressive yeah. I guess you can say But not really If you if you don't If you don't bother me I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna bother you But yeah. if you come Messing with me Like I ain't gonna I ain't just gonna fold like, nah, for You know sure. what I'm saying But that's that's kind of how I was. But yeah. I was always chill. Though. I was always like a funny guy, happy go lucky people. Yeah, real likable kind of like kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like people liked sure. me, girls liked me, guys like was cool with me. Yeah. I was always just cool. What is something like when you uh, like growing up or even just it could be even recently, bro? Mm-hmm. Something like an event in your life that kind of that you could think back on that kind of changed your perspective or maybe kind of shifted your your mindset. Um, or yeah, just really impacted you in life. Hmm. Um. I would say that going as a family, going through somebody that had cancer mm. and watching somebody else die at a young age, mm. like one, like one minute I'm sitting here playing with him and then talking and then the next minute he's gone. Yeah. So that's, that was the first time I was like, dang, like he ain't coming back. And Who was his it? name was Quincy. Quincy? Yeah. So it was one, so it was one of our, our friends from the hospital my sister made. Um, and he was like, I was like probably six. Or no, I was like eight years old, right? Mm-hmm. But Quincy had a son. And he had a girl, and he was like, bro, he's like 22. He had cancer. Bro, didn't make it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He left a, a son and a, and a wife back home, or like his girl or whatever. How old were you when? When that happened? Yeah. I, was, I was like, so my sister, she got cancer when she was six. Um, I was I'm three years old. So I was about like nine. nine. So I was like nine, yeah. So, but when it first started, uh, she she was like limping and stuff. They took her to the doctor at like the age of five. So I was like, uh, I was like seven or eight. Mm-hmm. I really didn't know what was going on. I just knew she was like. You know what I'm saying? She had like a little limp, and then she went bald, and then like she was in the hospital. So I thought she just really had. I just I knew she was sick, but I thought she just had like the flu. And me being a kid, I'm like, oh, she all right? She'll she'll get over. Like you know, she's in the hospital. Doctor yeah. take care of. Like, she she wants to come home. How many? How long we gotta wait? Mm-hmm. Cause we used to have to go to like we used to travel back and forth to go visit yeah. my sister. So that was one thing as a kid going through that. Like a lot of people don't go through that, bro. And it's really like tough. Yeah. Doing that, like you know what I'm saying? What kind of cancer did she have? Osteosarcoma. Okay. So they took it was in her leg. Um, mm. They took like 13 inches of her leg and put a prosthetic in it. Oh wow! So yeah, but she's still here though. So yeah. thank God, you know what I'm saying? All praise, glory, yeah, to God. That's um, amazing. So yeah, bro, she made it through, and and, and it's crazy because like I just said, bro, people don't make it through that. Like mm-hmm. I, I just seen somebody. I was just hanging talking with him. Next day, bro, was just gone. Yeah. I was like, I was like, what happened? Like, and as a kid, I didn't understand. I'm like. Cause they had to rule them, they had to will them out, all that kind of stuff. But I just didn't understand it. I was like, people, people was coming in and out, in and out, in and out the hospital. And luckily, like I said, my sister, she's one of the people that stayed, made it through. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, but pediatrics, they're kids, so it's like, I mean, even with adults too. But it's not always guaranteed. You gonna, yeah. you gonna come out? Cause especially back then, it was like still new. They just did the chemotherapy. So like, yeah, bro, that was a big, that was a big thing. And then also, I want to say, my graduation from high school. I had a, I had a going away party, right? And I think at the age of like 17, 18, I started realizing how much influence I had on people. Mm. Like, I started noticing different things. I had to go to a party. People spoke at my party and different things that like my peers would say. I just never would have like thought that they even were watching me or looking like, you know what I'm saying? Or even like caring what I did. Like, bro, I, when I say if if not giving an F had to be a person, it was me. Mm-hmm. I promise you, bro. I did what I did. Like, I, I did meet, and I didn't pay attention to, like, nobody else. I was just yeah. minding my business. I was chilling. Like, if you had something going on, if you ain't tell me, if I ain't see it, then I yeah. see you. What's up? Dap you up. Um, I was always, like, walking around school, had headphones in, singing something or whatever, just chilling. You know what I'm saying? Selling my another business day. Yeah. I'm selling, out here making plays. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, hearing, like, how much influence, like, how just seeing how much you can impact somebody that's not um, – Relate that you're not related to, mm. you see what I'm saying? Like that's why I think it's really important um, for you to treat your friends like family. Like, mm-hmm. If you're my friend, you're like family. Yeah, you know what I'm saying ain't nobody. That's just how I grew up. You know what I'm saying? Like loyalty is a big thing with me. So like, if if I'm cool with you, I'm locked in with you. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I treat you like that's just how I grew up. Like you know what I'm saying a lot of love in my household. A lot of like that's how that's how we grew up. My people from the south, from Louisiana. So like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? For sure. That's just how I grew up. So once I seen that. I started really thinking, like, dang, like, I never knew you was going through this. One of my friends was going through something. Like, he was, I was the best friend he ever had. And, you know what I'm saying? Growing up, like, when I first met him my freshman year, he, went to, he tried to fight me. Like, he tried to jump me, <laughs> right? He was, like, a big crip or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, he's like, he was, like, a bully, right? Yeah. So, he used to bully people. But he tried to bully me, but 
I wasn't going. Yeah. Right. And mind you, like I be chilling, like I said, but people be trying because they think I'm sweet because I'm always chill. Don't really say too much or yeah. always laughing. You know what I'm saying? Think some of the joke, but nah. But anyway, so yeah, that happened. And but after that, we was cool. I got him on a basketball team. You know what I'm saying? Nobody. But really, what it is like as a kid, bro. You don't ever know what somebody's going through at the crib. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You don't ever know like what type of love somebody's not getting. You see what I'm saying? So me being who I was, like. I treated my friends with love. I never switched up. Even now, I, I know some of my friends, um, we just made like 10 plus years, almost, almost from high school, from graduating. So it's like, and I'm still, I'm still, still me. I'm always good. Like, but I'm always good with like reaching out. You know what I'm saying? I've never been afraid to, <laughs> I've never been afraid to put my foot first or like yeah. go out, go out, go out, of, you know what I'm saying? Go out of my, out of my way to do something for somebody else. Like, let's say you my bro, right? Me and you went to school together, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, you might not hit me up. You might not text me back. I'm going to just call you. Or I see you, but hey, bro, you good? Like, what's up? What's yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? But every time I see you, it's, just, it's the same. Like, yeah. Even you didn't text me back. You ain't said nothing. I still, like, you ain't did me wrong. So, like, yeah. I ain't got no smoke with you. You feel me? So, I just feel like with me, a lot of people That's change, real, bro. Especially nowadays. Like, yeah. I, I, I kind of found that, like, with my friends, like, just mm-hmm. on the same subject, like, sometimes we just don't get back to each other. But it's not even, like. It's just like it's it, it's not really that even a big deal. Like yeah, you could be like, damn, you didn't hit me up, but like it's really just like they might be going through something at that moment, and mm-hmm. it's like I'll still check up on them, but it's like it's never anything like Person. personal, you know? Yeah, bro. Uh, a lot of times it's not, and I learned that like, bro, I don't. That's the thing though. People always want to hold a grudge or like try to take like, bro. I don't know what you got going on, right? Mm-hmm. So I just that's why I always just tap in, and then also too like don't. Don't everybody got to stop taking everything to heart? Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? We all, especially now as we get older, like it's different from high school to now, bro. Like you got, you got, you got to figure out how to how to live out here, how to survive. We're not everybody's not at home with their parents. We're not. We don't have to go to school no more. You see what I'm saying? You got to go to work. You got to figure out how to make bread. If you got kids, you got to somebody feed. If you got a shorty and y'all live together, or you got a wife, like you know what I'm saying? You got to, especially as a man too, bro. Like what? I don't have time to sit here and. Hold hands with you. Yeah. So when I hit you, like, that's why I, my friends that I still do have, bro, when I hit them, we back to wherever we picked up, uh, le- yeah. left off on. And then we just update each other. And then we go on about our business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, especially as men, bro, I feel like women do that more. Like, we, they talk every day. Like, mm-hmm. I, I have a lot of sisters. So I grew up around women. Yeah. So I realized, like, women do a lot of that, like, kind of hold hands. And, you know what I'm saying? Do all yeah. the sentimental stuff. I mean, it's cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I like that <laughs> stuff, too. It's, it's enjoyable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It makes life a little better. But as a man, I don't have time to sit here and do all that all the time. Like, bro, oh, I, sure. I can't. I, I got got to make plays. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? got to make some shape. Mm-hmm. And then me being the oldest in my household, I was really, like, the third parent in there. Like, I raised my sisters. Too. Yeah. Especially my baby sister. Like, yeah, bro. So, I had to. You very out. protective of them? Yeah. yeah. So, like, I'm protective, but, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I am. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. But I'm, like, I'm reason Like, the thing with me, bro, I'm a, I'm a realist. You yeah. feel me? I'm a realist. I'm very genuine. And so, like, I got to think real critical. Bless, Bless you. you. Now nah, you good. <laughs> Damn. I ain't gonna lie through the head for something like so. <laughs> I was like, whoa, some outside? Hello. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so, yeah, bro, I think, um, dang, what was I saying? <laughs> Oh, well, you're real. <laughs> you're a realist. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm a realist. I'm a realist. I'm a realist, bro. I, I think I, I seize opportunities when I when I see them, bro. Like like even for this, for example, bro. Using El Paso, I was like, oh, I gotta slide back through. Let, yeah. me, let me get some. Let me hit a bro up and see. What, mm-hmm. And we was talking like even that. Uh, when I was going through whatever, like I seen people. I seen celebrities that I met when I was at a young age. And for some reason, bro, ever since I was little, like back to what I. Every time I see the TV. I have the lines down packed, right? I watch it every time or like whatever show it is, whatever it is. And I'm just thinking like, even though I was like, bro, I can do that. I always thought mm-hmm. about like, I'm looking at these people. I was like, why I can't be on TV? I want to see myself on TV. Yeah. I just start doing stuff. That's why I was going to, I was going to get into that. Like, is that how you kind of got into acting, bro? Like, yeah, yeah. So, um, back when I was like a kid growing up, I would say, I, I think, and I didn't realize until I heard this from one of my uncles. It was me and Big Bro, but he passed yeah. away um, back at my home church when I grew up. Um, but anyway, he said, like, me and this other guy were, like, probably some of the best, like, natural performers he's seen, right? Yeah. So, like. Performers I, in what aspect? Like, just talking? Just, like. Performing, like. So, like, just performing, bro. Like, anything that inqu- inquires, like, being on a mic, in yeah. front of lights, stage, camera, action, like. Like, you know, some people like, not saying anybody can't do it, but like some people are just more natural. For sure. At it, less shy, less like, 
you know, they know how to work their way around a camera. Uh, what's the word when somebody says you're photogenic, yeah. right? I've gotten that before. Like, and mind you, I haven't had class for none of this. I just, yeah. bro, me, I see some. I just, if I want to do it, I'm just going to go do it, bro. It, yeah. I'm just going to go do it. Whether if I fail or not, bro, just go do it. That's one thing I think that was installed in me growing up is like, you got to have, I had to always believe in myself. And I think me being the oldest and then to the only boy low key in the house, like, I had like I didn't have a big brother. I didn't have a big sister. Like I do have big sisters, but I didn't grow up with them. Mm-hmm. Like as in, in my childhood. So like at the house, bro. Let's say something happened with my sisters. Something happened with me, bro. If I got in a fight, if I if I had to go, it was just me and I had my mama. But like I'm talking to my mom, and everything. But like yeah. it was just me growing up, bro. Like I said, I grew up in the dirt. Like mm-hmm. bro, I, I ain't have nobody. Yeah. So ain't, ain't no backup. Ain't no nothing. It's me. So whatever I had to do, I had to figure it out. You feel me? So I didn't have time to sit here. And be scared of what the next person gonna think, bro. Yeah. It's either you or me type. And I got I got two little sisters at home, bro. I gotta protect them. I gotta walk, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't got and I think that also helped me too, like to kind of be more cautious because my mom always used to tell me, like, think about how you want somebody to treat your sisters, right? So that was that was the one thing mm-hmm. that helped me like with the ladies, low key. Like I think that's a big thing. Like dudes who have sisters, mm-hmm. for the most part, like you can you can tell like that. You just kind of you know how to interact with a woman. Oh, yeah, exactly. The opposite sex because I grew. Yeah, you grew up around. Yeah. Like, one thing my mom told me, bro, you want to learn anything about a, a girl, well, just watch your sisters. Mm. They're overly dramatic. <laughs> They're highly emotional. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, and when you grow up in that, bro, you, you figure out how to move, how to how to kind of like talk to them too. Because again, like if you grew up, if you see a house, I got cousins, house full of boys, right? Mm-hmm. And how they treat women, not to say they like they're like dogs or anything, but like it's just different. Yeah, for you sure. See what I'm saying like even I have friends that didn't have sisters, but girls like things. The things girls complain about, and it, it is I think it is it is true because I met somebody else that has like sisters and stuff, and like they are more like personable, more like you know what I'm saying more I guess in in tune with their that feminine like they have yeah more intellectual like more uh, what's the word um, well the, a girl's emotional intelligence is like yes. is very. It, not to say guys don't have emotional intelligence, but for the most part, girls it has to be learned. Emo- yeah, emotional intelligence is like naturally very high. Like yeah. girls can naturally like read a room or like just pick up on certain like energies mm-hmm. like pretty well. Where mm-hmm. a guy, he's very if you're not really in tune, bro, you're very ob- oblivious to a lot of shit that's actually yeah. like going on in I, a social setting. You know? Yeah, nah, facts, yeah. facts, and I think that has a lot to do with it too. Like just our genetic makeup, bro. Like yeah. they they give birth. <laughs> that's a very spiritual thing, bro. Yeah. I to you. That's very like they're very like sensitive. They're very in tune too. I think that's what. Not say like as a man, you can get in tune if you tap yeah. in and do all that. But like naturally, yeah, they're more gifted. Mm-hmm. And then me, I was blessed, bro, being around them all the time. So yeah, my emotional intelligence is very high. So yeah. like I think that was the whole thing. And also too, when I used to talk to girls, I just. Bro, I swear, I talked to every girl like I talked to my sister, and yeah. that just that just it worked out for me. Uh-huh. So like, I could see that. Yeah, and if you, and honestly too, that's bro. Honestly, like no woman, I, and I've talked to like people that's strippers, all type of stuff. In that usually the the psych the psych of that usually if they have daddy issues, you know what I'm saying? They got involved with that, obviously. If they lack some type of male <laughs> guidance or whatever or whatever happened to them, that's why they are kind of involved or whatever happened. Yeah. You know, quick money, whatever. You know, like I said, sex sales. Yeah. So like that, but like. Most women, bro, they don't want to be like sexualized like that, mm-hmm. bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, niggas is horny. Yeah. So like, people don't know how to like a lot of men don't know how to control themselves. So it's like, yeah, that's why you got all these different things that be you know what I'm saying going on or whatever. Yeah. But um, if you ever like talk to these people that's in like the nightlife or like if you've been around it, like kind of sit down, like have like an interview with them or whatever, just talk to them. I've talked to people, did some interview. They just told me like, you know what I'm saying? They don't. They only doing this because it's like a last resort, like a last option, bro. Nobody wants to be sexualized all the time, bro. They yeah. want to be loved too. Like they're still humans, bro. For they're sure. not like sex robots. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Like, and also a lot of it is like because of social media, mm-hmm. we really only see the like a very small percentage of people, and we think that's like every general. Like we overgeneralize like crazy, yeah, you know? Man, what and we're it? only seeing at like the the really clouded up girls who like they're that's what they do, you know? But like a, a lot of the like just average normal girls that are really like they don't want to be like that you know they want to no, treat it like that you they know? don't they want to bro the girls live in in, in la la land bro they have yeah. fantasies bro they <laughs> want to have their prince in shining armor they want to have you know what i'm saying have a kid have a family yeah you know well they some of them don't say that though some of them's like I don't bro. Know, but yeah, like, yeah bro they just yeah afraid to be you know what i'm saying who they are you yeah. know what i'm saying afraid to be judged by other people that's yeah. the whole thing like you know what i'm saying that vulnerability so like bro a woman wants a man she wants to be treated like a princess she wants to 
have that and she wants to give that to a man and she like bro girls at the age of like i don't even know i'm trying to think i think like five six but they're already talking about being married having kids like oh i want my husband this that mm-hmm. playing with all like when they're playing with their little dogs or whatever <laughs> yeah bro at five and six what am i doing i'm playing yeah. with gi joe and yeah. sonic if i'm fighting i'm doing you know what i'm saying nah. doing that kind of stuff bro i'm playing <laughs> sports or something i'm not I'm not even love. What what is that? Like, yeah. ew, you have the cooties. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm gonna throw this dirt in your yeah. air and, and, and like run away. Like, what's up? Uh, yeah. I'm trying to play. You feel me? <laughs> Men, we're we're simple, bro. Yeah. You give me something good to eat, bro. Good sex. I got, I got, I got money. I'm cooling. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We got our little gadgets and gadgets. That's how men work, bro. That's 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 what we like. Real simple creatures. Women, bro, they they very complex. You know what I'm saying. Women, it, they a, a girl can be doing one thing, one task, right? But in the back of her head, she's wondering why he came. He hasn't hugged me. He hasn't kissed me. But right, but she's handling the kid. She's mm. on on online, like doing her job, doing whatever. But at the back, she's thinking about this. She's thinking about that. And then she's and how she's doing all this. She's has her emotions tied to each like task, yeah. right? So let's say she's mad at you because you you ain't you ain't you just walked in. You're tired, right? You just said hi, walked in, went to the room, about to take a shower or whatnot. And she feels like, oh well, he didn't give me a hug and kiss me or. I did my hair like let's say girl she went got your girl went and got her hair done nails done she just got a new fit on you know what I'm saying some lashes she's just doing extra little stuff and you don't know there's nothing yeah that's tough, an issue bro <laughs> tough bro that's an issue right but but everybody's worried about oh how many numbers can I get or, or how many girls I got on my phone. like bro the and I you know what I'm saying as cliche as it is bro real men bro <laughs> Real player stuff, like bro, you gotta learn how to treat and take care of that woman, bro. Mm-hmm. Like no cap, bro. That's that's a real, that's a real man. That's a real pimp. That's a real player. You know what I'm saying? That's real yeah, player stuff. Sure. So like, I don't know, bro. That's not cool. that's not what is. Uh, I don't think that's what's being pushed now. Like no, it's not at all. No, I not. I see so many like, just so many different. Uh, yeah, really things that are being kind of like pushed on. I guess modern like our generations yeah. men. Mm-hmm. And I think it's actually just making things worse. I think it's like separate, dividing, making divide between men and women, like confusion just more. Yeah, and I don't even know, like, yeah, bro, social media in, in that way, like that. That's why I think uh, it's good to have like OnlyFans crazy. <laughs> <laughs> OnlyFans went crazy, bro. That I think that jump kicked it to like a thousand, like made it ten times yeah. worse, bro. OnlyFans came out, and the thing is. Only fans was intended for models to like start and market themselves, and then we as people, bro, we sexu- we we sexualize everything. So it's yeah. like, no matter what it is, bro, it gets sexualized. Yeah, you know in saying? a way, if you think about it, like, yeah, like you can look down, or like some people might look down on the people with OnlyFans, but who's who's su- who's supplying that? Like, who who where's the demand coming from? Type shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> uh, who's supporting it? Yeah, us. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's that plays a big part in that too, bro. For sure. And then, like, like I just said, bro, like when, when you're promoting sex, when you're promoting like anything negative, bro, you got to think people don't realize like everybody thinks it's a game. Like spirits aren't real. You just sitting here playing with like all this demonic stuff or anything, bro. That stuff is real, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I was I, I don't know if you heard. Have you seen the show called Snowfall? Yeah. Hell yeah. OK, so, bro, did you read at I guess the end season when he turned into a crackhead and how he said he prayed to the devil so that way he could um like be able to. To be able to act like as a crackhead like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So he did that. I read about it. He did that, and then afterwards, like he after like the season, and everything was done. He said like he had spirits haunting him, like he had torment in his mind, like he was going crazy, right? Yeah. I'm like, bro, people think that stuff is again, like, bro, you don't just certain stuff you don't play with, bro. Especially like in the south, it's just, like spiritual stuff. That stuff is big, like voodoo, all that. That's, that that stuff is real. Yeah, you know what I'm saying You're playing with black magic, all that. That stuff is real, bro. So like, I think what what people need to start doing for one. Is is we don't spread enough love, you know what I'm saying? Th- think about what, the, what people like the culture, right? Right? Everybody's rapping about is like scamming, getting bread, mess effing somebody over, trying to step on the next man to get ahead. When really, in reality, we should be grabbing the next man and taking both of us to get ahead. Mm-hmm. Because like, for one, to raise a child, bro, it takes a village to raise a child, right? So like, let's say he had a kid, I got a kid, but like your auntie, your grandparents, your cousins, they all pour into you and make you who you are your mm. foundation you see what i'm saying so it's like more people need to build a stronger foundation get right with god or you know what i'm saying whatever you believe in but for, for me you know what i'm saying get right with god um figure out what you want to do in life you know what i'm saying i think that's like the biggest anything i had to struggle was like find out what i want to do bro especially high school you got you getting college pushed down your throat oh you gotta go to college you gotta do this you gotta do that it's like it's all a business too. At one point, after mm-hmm. after it's, it's all an agenda. Somebody made the curriculum. Somebody made like 
like everything that we learn, it, somebody push it out. You know what I'm saying? And then half the time, they taking out history and not even letting us know what's really going on. So yeah. that's been going on for like every generation that has that. Mm-hmm. Every generation. But more people need to just worry about, like I said, find out what makes you happy. Finding out what 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 you do, you know what I'm saying, how you can spread love and how you can be a blessing to somebody else, bro. Then you see what I'm saying? Because the more you the more you help somebody else out, they gonna remember that. They gonna take that token of love that you just gave them and then pass it on instead of repeating this cycle of hate and jealousy and like, you know what I'm saying, like I'm hating on you because you got a podcast and oh I do YouTube too, but uh, nah, you invited me to come on. I ain't gonna, I, I ain't gonna do your podcast because nah I'm trying to make it. I, I want to mm-hmm. be the number one. I want like bro, you ain't gonna make it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you can only make it so far alone, but you can make it so f- much further with a team. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? For sure. It's like that with any any dynamics, anything, bro. It takes it takes like I said, it takes a village to raise somebody. So it's like yeah, never forget your village, bro. For sure. I think mm-hmm. that's I think especially when you first start, like um, it's it's kind of hard to really realize that Mm -hmm. um i think for a lot of people but the as soon as you start like just kind of supporting other people Mm -hmm. and just making sure that like just showing love just kind of helping people in their own whatever they're doing like Mm -hmm. for some reason like it just come it really just comes back around bro like um you don't have to it doesn't have to be a selfish thing bro like but it's really just because you know that it's just you're making a positive impact at the end of the day Mm -hmm. i think that's the best way how do you feel like uh like faith because uh, you said you kind of you basically grew up in the church, right? Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel like that uh, has kind of impacted your life, and how do you think it it could be beneficial to someone like who's going through like mental health issues? Um, I would say for one, um, it lets you know like you're not by yourself. You mm-hmm. see, what I'm saying God is always with us. You know, what I'm saying Jesus, He's always He's always there. Um, I, and for me, like uh, I got started when I was at, at a young age, right? So you just go to church, you do whatever, like, you do whatever your parents say, no matter what faith it is, right? So um, you grew up in that. And then as you get older and start to live life, like, a lot of things, when I was in church, bro, and, like, pastors, preachers, whoever's t- speaking, like, it, it didn't really apply to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a kid. I'm just going through. Even as I got in high school, I didn't, I wasn't working for real. Like, I mean, I, I did what I did at school, so I'm making money, but, like, I wasn't in real world yet. So, like, a lot of stuff they said I didn't really, couldn't apply it. Now, I did understand, like, the... I understood the the concept, right? The concept or whatever they're teaching about, like hope, faith. Um, you know, you don't you don't do evil to somebody. You know what I'm saying? You help the next person. That kind yeah. of thing. That's like that's simple. That's elementary. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I got that. But as I start getting older, you know, I start dealing with women, start dealing with jobs, start dealing with you know the real like pressures of life. Like I think it, it helps um, give you something to look forward to. Gives you something not to be all in your own depression or not to be to keep because like misery loves company right so like the more i'm down let's say I, I am depressed or my mental health is not going according to plan like god there's a way that god can reach out to you and and like that nobody else can mm. and like there's, there's so many different testimonies so many different stories of people saying how god came to them in a dream somebody used god uh, god used somebody to come speak to them like you're yeah. just like some sometimes some somebody might come to you randomly right or somebody might come to you whatever you're going through let's say you just need it whatever you might have needed and a stranger you don't even know bro come up to you and just bless you with whatever you just needed that's that's god that's like just certain things how certain things work out like bro um has that happened say, to you like have you had experiences like that mm, yeah mm-hmm. i didn't realize it though until after the fact mm. so like going through it i would say god for sure protected me in Afghanistan, protecting me when yeah. I was out in the streets. Like, bro, it, I've been in so many situations, like, where I should have, like, died for real. Like, even, even me being born, I almost, you know what I'm saying? My parent, my mom told me I almost died. Like, mm-hmm. it, it was crazy. Um, But, like, yeah, bro, I, I remember witnessing, bro, I, I was at a, like, at a function, bro, like, one time. It, it's like, it's always, like, I was at the wrong place, wrong time, but somehow, some, some way, I ended up getting shielded for whatever was going on mm. outside in the world type. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So that's how I know God, like, his grace and mercy, like, he just always kept some type of ram in the bush for me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I remember I was at a party at, at this club one time with some of my teammates back in Alabama, like, and, they, and people end up getting a shooting. So everything's cool. I go to the bathroom. Whoop, whoop, I'm using the bathroom. I'm about to come out. Somebody start shooting, and somebody got shot, and, like, I'm going out. But just, just so happened... 
right where they were shooting at, it was like a security guard right there. Like, I don't know where he came from. He came out of nowhere and just told me, like, hey, bro, stay in. Don't come out, blah, blah, yeah. blah, whatever. Now, mind you, somebody was like, oh, he's just doing his job. He's doing this. But, like, where did he come from? I hadn't seen that dude all night. Yeah. All night. You know what I'm saying? I ain't see him when I walked in. He ain't pat me down. I don't know where bro came from. I yeah. just know when it's time for me to come out the bathroom, wherever, and they were shooting, like, literally, bro, the bathroom right here, dude right there shooting, whatever's going on. He was security guard. He come out of nowhere and, like, just tells me, you know what I'm saying, that. And other aspects, like, just that, being in the car with people, just drunk, like, you know what I'm yeah. saying, just, just out there just doing stuff. You feel yeah. me? And somehow, some way, I always came out. I was good. Yeah. I was good. Like, who, like, and then certain things, like, things that are unex are naturally unexplainable, but supernaturally happening. Yeah. It's God. For sure. You know what I'm saying? It's God. Like, it's, there's no other. You know, yeah. I guess you, it's. It's all about what you believe yeah. in, too. It's, it's faith. Like, at the end of the day, whatever your faith is, is it's simply that faith. You know what I'm saying? Things, you know what I'm saying? You got to believe in something that's, you can't, you can't, you can't um, describe it. It's not something that's black and white that you can put on pen and paper. You see what I'm saying? But it's something that you can feel. It's something that you can sense. You see what I'm saying? And it's something like that you see, too. So it just depends on how tapped in you are and whatever your faith is, you know, how much you pray, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and discipline yourself too. But faith is just something, it's just believing, bro. Yeah. All you got to do it and, and wait, for everybody that like, I don't know what you believe in, but for people that's believers out there that believe in, you know, I'm Christian or believing in Christ. Uh, it, in the Bible, it just says you got to have, you know, faith of a mustard seed. See what I'm saying? That's all you need. People think you got to, um, oh, I got to, I got to be a Bible thumper. I got to be perfect. I got to, uh, can't do this. And like, bro, you know how much? First of all, he didn't got to come back. He didn't come back to like save people like that. He's not asking for people to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. None of us are perfect. But in our imperfections, that's what make us like uniquely like who we are. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So as long as you know that for real, bro, and 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 you show love, you know, I heard and people think you know how doing like negative things, you support and, and and have a relationship with God. That's really what it's mainly about relationship, bro. You got people that's in church. Up there preaching, telling you how to live right, and they going back, messing with all the the women in the yeah. church, sleeping, fornicating, doing drugs. I heard killing people, like getting people murked, like. But they but they hold a high position in the church. Yeah. They doing this, you know what I'm saying? So it's like people get too caught up in the the cinematics of things. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All the politics and that happen, and it's politics and everything. Church, sports. You see what I'm saying? The work, like. But what you got to realize is, and what God is worried about, bro, is what are you doing in your daily walk? Because when you die and you go up to 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 hear the judgment, you're gonna be by yourself. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna have the pastor, your mama, your sister. No, you came in this world alone. You're gonna go out alone. As far as like, as far as that. So it's like, if more people just work on self, bro. I can't, I can't like preach that enough. But work on self, I think we be better as a people. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? For sure. Mm -hmm. I think we're very focused on like what other people are doing. Yeah, bro. Most too, of the time, too yeah. worried about the other. Too worried about the other grass, bro. It's not yeah. always greener on the other side, bro. Yeah. And then, too, you don't know what somebody had to do to keep that grass green like that. Mm -hmm. You don't know how much they have exactly, to put into yeah. it, how much water they have to do, how much soil and dirt they have to go through, how many weeds they have to pluck out the grass. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot to go into that to make it look like that. And a lot of people, a lot of people, we, a lot of people, this special generation, bro, lazy. You know what I'm saying? Don't want to put no work in. Don't want to put no, no footwork, no groundwork. You know what I'm saying? Get some elbow grease in there and do it. You know what I'm saying? People don't want to do that no more. And that's the thing that lacks in this microwave generation that we live in, bro. Everything is instant. You scam, you do this, you get you rich instantly. Back in the day, bro, you have to grind. Bro, you get all this money at a young age, bro. You don't even know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. You're doing stupid stuff, blowing it on hoes, going out drinking, blowing your like nobody's teaching you to invest. That's why you always have somebody, some type of guidance. You gotta have like an OG or have a mentor. You just you did a talk show in front of people, no, that's what you did. Yeah, so that was my first time in, in that when I did that, that was um in front of a live audience. Yeah. So I, I was a little nervous when I did that too. Uh -huh. Um and over there, like in Phoenix, Arizona, like, you can drink, smoke, smoking is legal. Yeah. So I was like a little I was a little messed up, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. But it was cool. <laughs> I'm up to I'm put a little bit. All right, bet, bet. go ahead. Um Did you what'd y'all talk about on, on that show? Oh, on that show, bro, it was bro, I ain't gonna lie, it was it was a little like Was it very wholesome or was it like nah, 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 Oh, it got crazy it got a little like wild or what? Nah, not it even just, wild. It just like you feel me, like it was so it was two women, yeah, and it was two men. It was like a panel. We was on a panel. So like I ain't gonna lie, when you have women in there, bro, they get real, like, you know what I'm saying? But it was cool. It was more like, <laughs> they was, it was talking about, like, relationships, mm -hmm. like, a lot of kind of current topics, too, like, talking about some colorism, some type of stuff. Mm -hmm. It was more kind of like, I want to say, like, more kind of like, focus on, like, race, 
like okay. race, yeah, like the kind of things that go on. Cause it was like a lot of black and brown people in there. Yeah, it wasn't nothing but black and Mexicans. In there. Uh-huh. I swear, like all Spanish people. It was like I think I seen like two white girls that night. I was in, <laughs> I was in the audience. Not, yeah, not not a lot, but I mean it was it was still cool. It was it was it was like a space for us to like speak. You know what I'm saying? So I thought it was cool. Um, they talked about like a lot of different things that's in the culture that we like talk about. Like on the side, like yeah. the whole light skin, dark skin thing, the whole <laughs> like pretty privileged thing. That was a thing. Um, it was more like can can uh, can a man date a boss? Can mm. can a man handle like a woman making more than him, or can women do this? Like you know what I'm saying, it's yeah. more like well, more I, like that. I, actually, I had some. Uh, so the last dude I had on Alex Majestic, mm-hmm. he was saying how a, a a woman who's like very career driven mm-hmm. can't be in her feminine. Uh, and I, I I didn't necessarily kind of agree with that. And mm. I just wanted to get like what you thought about that. Like, have you heard that before? Like, where a girl like if if yeah. a woman's too focused on her career, yeah, like just she very, can't be in her. Yeah, feminine. like she's very like she just has more masculine like just tendencies. Like she's more like, um, yeah, yeah, more like just not in her feminine. I guess Does that make okay. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I understand the question. Yeah. Um, I, I would say for me. I, I'm not gonna say it can't like it's just always. I'm not gonna ever say it's, it's, it can never happen because mm-hmm. like you know what I'm saying. Based off what I've seen, and based off people that I know in the world who make who make a lot of money, like it definitely can work. Mm-hmm. But there's critical, critical like dynamics in that situation. For one, that woman has to has to want to be led because she has. They have to realize when I'm at work, I'm this. When I leave work and go home, I take this hat off and I put this hat on, mm. and then now I'm back to a relationship. But then I think too, as 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 a, as a woman too, compared to a man, like you might be a leader or whatever at 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 home at work, but when you come back home and we're here, like you know what I'm saying, it's me and you. Like I'm I'm the man. I'm I'm the head of the household. Or like you know what I'm saying. So it depends. Or like we're we're like partners. So it, it dep- but it also it depends on like the dynamics of the relationship. Yeah. It we're like we're in 2024. We're not in like the old days where it's like, yeah. oh, I'm the man, I'm this, that, and there. You do what I say. And then also too, like back then, what what's a big difference too back then? Like, um, the the economics too of of a household, right? Like, it's not we're not in the day or in the times anymore where only a man's income can yeah. support the whole household. Like, no, bro, no, bro. Depending on where you live. Your location, how much you making, what job, you low key need more than just one stream of income. Unless sure. you just, unless you re, depend on, like I said, depend on how much money you making off that one source. But it's very, it's not really smart. In our yeah. generation, most we have like a couple streams of income. It's, it's, it's more, it's more ideal yeah. to have at least two or three streams of income coming sure. in. And if you got a family, like I think, I think a woman could do it. Or I mean, I think, I, I think it happened. I just think. What he, whatever he said, I think I do agree to that to a certain degree. Yeah. I feel like a lot of women don't know how to carpent, um, like the di- like divide, like you know what I'm saying, Dis- distinguish the two, like yeah, car- ah, what's the word I'm trying to say? Car- par- car- compartmentalize. Yes, compartmentalize, okay, yeah. like the two things. So yeah. I feel like how much is that on the man though? Like, could, could, like first of all, like do you, do you feel like in order for the relationship to be happy, like the man just naturally has to take more of a leading, like a, a lead role. I say this. This is what I say. Yeah. This is what I say. I feel like um, a woman will let any man lead who is a leader. Mm. Money doesn't matter. A, a woman can make more than a man, but if she is not secure with her man or feels safe, then she's not going to allow him. She's not going to respect him enough to allow him to lead. Mm. And as a man, if if she doesn't respect me as a man... I'm not going to care enough to keep her safe. So women and men, we operate different men. We're all about respect. You see what I'm saying? So if women respect you, you're going to care enough about her and she respects you as, as her boyfriend or her husband. You know what I'm saying? She's not going to be out in the streets doing certain things. Why? Because I respect my man. I respect this relationship. So when a man receives that respect, he's going to care enough to keep his woman safe. Mm. Where does that respect come from? A woman can recognize a man when he walk in the room. Yeah, see what I'm saying? You gonna you gonna respect me off the off of how 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 I from me respecting myself mm-hmm. for one, for how I walk into the room. I carry myself. I'm not here talking about something goofy about whatever it, it has to do. Like I'm on business. I come in here. I'm sitting down. You know what I'm saying? I'm respectable. You see what I'm saying? I um 
I treat women with respect. You treat them with love. You're kind. Mm-hmm. You're not like I heard just treating a, a woman like a whore off the street. You see what I'm saying? Like no nobody's gonna respect that. And then yeah. too, if you're not if you're not honorable, like you know what I'm saying, you gotta be you have to be a respectable person to get yeah. respect. Well a lot of men feel like they have to like at least from what I like a lot of people feel like they have to be an asshole in today's generation to like like that's that's what a lot of like the what do you say? Kind of the misconception is that girls don't like like they say like girls don't like 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 nice dudes, but I think it's it's not it's not even nice or polite. It's just more like, what's the word? You gotta be firm. I yeah. feel like too. You're not yeah. like don't yeah like no no woman wants a man she can just walk all over. Yeah. But a lot of women try to control men too. But then that's the thing when a man starts being a man like you can't be mad like you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. There's there's a time to put somebody in a place, and who, who's supposed to do that? A man. So like if if I'm with my lady or or she's not even my lady but we out or whatever and she acting out acting crazy, bro I'm gonna tell her hey mm-hmm. you need to sit down calm like stop doing like you know what I'm saying like put it like check her but like do it respectfully but also do it to the point where it's like yeah you set the tone you set the standard mm-hmm. so whoever if, as a man bro you come in and you set the standard or whatever you're about set the standard bro everybody has to fall in line and mm-hmm. if they don't then you you as a man you move around. You see what I'm saying? You don't go down to somebody else's level, bro. You move around. Like, yeah. We were just talking about this the other day, huh? You were talking about, uh, like, kind of that firmness, like, putting, putting like, just putting your foot down in certain situations. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And, and that's a real thing, bro. Because, cause, look, I'm going to tell you this. As much as women think or as much as women say, oh, we have the power and this, that. Bro, if, if, if this whole place burnt down. Who you think, <laughs> like, your girl going, she going to go try to save her or she going to run or she going to try to look look to her man to come, to come, you know what I'm saying, come come save her, come do this. Like, mm-hmm. you, like I said, like, a woman has to feel, like, safe, secure. She has to feel like, okay, I know if something go down, he got my back. Regardless how big he is, how strong or how skinny, it don't, that don't even matter, bro. It has to, it's a feeling of, like, security, bro. Mm-hmm. Women have to feel secure wherever they at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So once they feel like you take that, because that, we're men, but we're we're the hunters. You know what I'm saying? They're there, like you know what I'm saying. We're the hunters, gathers. They come back. They're the, they're the nurturers. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? They nurture whatever we bring back. So it's like whenever, like even with friends, bro. Like if I, so me personally with women, and I think a lot of times why women respect me so much is because how I treat them for one, and then two also like they notice like yeah you not like yeah you might some do stuff but I, like you have to stand for something or you'll go for anything. So no matter what you are about, if you stand on it, they have to respect whatever you're standing on. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like you got you got to stand on it, bro. It don't matter what it is. If if, if you're a type of man, bro, where I can say some things and and persuade you, and you don't got own, your own mind for yourself, you see what I'm saying? Like you weak. I don't care how many muscles you got, you weak. Because mm-hmm. I can get to your head. Now what you gonna do? So I think that's where respect comes from. Respect comes from. Within, like, you know what I'm saying? Me respecting myself and a woman respecting whatever I got going on because she knows I'm not going to tolerate no no nonsense, nothing like whatever it goes against what the grain of what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where it comes from. Yeah, for sure. Even as a woman, bro, if you've seen, you seen a girl or a woman and she's out loose in the streets, you feel me, or she comes in acting crazy, not really acting like a lady, you know what I'm saying? How you going to treat her? Yeah, you're gonna, you gonna treat, you gonna her, like treat her how she girl. act. How yeah, she act. Exactly. So, however you, whatever you think, or whatever, however you carry yourself, that's how people are gonna treat you. Mm-hmm. They are gonna treat you how you let them treat you. You don't For respect sure. yourself. Ain't nobody gonna respect you. Why well, I'm respect some? You know, you don't respect yourself. Yeah. You don't believe in your own. You don't believe what you're saying right now. Mm-hmm. For sure. So yeah. That's so nice. I, I think confidence come with that. You gotta believe in whatever you're talking about, bro. So and if you're wrong, a lot of times as a man, bro, I feel like as men, bro, there's, there's nothing wrong with admitting. Of being accountable, that I think that's where respect comes from. So you got to be an honorable person. You got to be an accountable person. You got to be somebody that somebody can rely on. You see what I'm saying? Mind you, we all mess up. We're not perfect, but you got to be somebody dependable. Like you know what I'm saying? If, if I'm about to go to war with you, or if I'm about to go into whatever with you, I got to know you got my back. Mm-hmm. Even as a brother, bro. You know what I'm saying? If me and you go somewhere, we're going to interview, or we we're going to make a sales pitch to somebody about our podcast that we got going on. And if I think you a little shaky, bro, I'm not gonna. Have no type of faith in you mm-hmm. whatsoever. I might, you know what I'm saying? And then, too, if you say, if you say, oh, I'm going to be here at 10 o'clock, and 10 o'clock come around, we in front of the interviewers, we in front of like the, the head of the companies, you know what I'm saying, CEOs, and you don't show up, no, nah, I don't got no respect for you. I don't, I don't believe nothing you say. I like your word don't mean nothing. Like a mm-hmm. lot of people forget, bro, as a man, bro, you, your word is bond. Like 
you know what I'm saying? Back in the day, bro, a man's word it, it meant something, bro. Like mm-hmm. people were you you like people nowadays, bro. They say whatever, just say whatever, yeah. <laughs> say whatever, do whatever, and don't stand on like it's like, bro. You said, oh, you said this. We now now you confused. You ain't no real man. Mm-hmm. Why? Because he's not a man of his word. So it's like that's one thing to fall back on, bro. As I said, a lot of things back in the day, bro, it, it, it made sense, bro. Mm-hmm. Like man, you have to be a man. Now certain things I think now like with our mental health and how you go about and do things like that that I feel like that's a that's a space that is more is more um is more available now like as far as like men's mental health like talking about things that we go through as men and more like men support men nowadays more yeah. more so I feel like than back in the day for sure yeah so, I yeah. can see that and I think uh that's big too like the the fact that we we really just say anything out here bro man and it's, it's like you don't people don't really like you don't keep your promises at all mm-hmm. and it's like sticks and stones bro you can at that point it's like words don't mean much mm-hmm. so how do you even know what's like what's reality how do you even know what's real because and then we also don't a lot of us don't keep our word to ourselves like we say we're gonna do something and it's just like it's it's not no action behind yeah it. exactly yeah. how do you feel like uh have you what do, what do you think somebody could i mean obviously i don't think there's any other answer besides like if you say you're gonna do something He's got to fucking do it, right? Bro, like, you just got to... Yeah, yeah, you just got to do it, bro. Because yeah. at the end of the... But nobody wants to hear no excuses, bro. Nobody wants to hear him, bro. Even... And, and that's why, like... I really, like... And, and too, bro, there's so much power in the tongue, bro. Like, people don't... Like, think about it. Out of all things, bro, you got two ears, two eyes, two nostrils on your nose. You know what I'm saying? You got one mouth, bro. Mm-hmm. You got one... That means it... Manifestation, all that kind of... That means something, bro. So, whatever you speak... If you speak life, bro, or you speak... Whatever you speak into existence... It's, it's it's gonna happen. Whatever you say is gonna. That's what you're gonna attract, and that's what a lot a lot of times too. Women, people, it don't matter, man or woman. If you say all all men are dogs, all men are cheaters, you are gonna meet every last one of them. You know mm-hmm. why? You just put that in the atmosphere. If 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 you say if if you call your kid stupid, if you call your kid whatever, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you dumb little this that and third. Oh, you get on my nerves. I hate you. I did. What what are you putting into this child right now, bro? All this negativity, all this speak life into people, speak love unto people, bro. Like, if you speak that, if you do that, you know what I'm saying? It comes back around full circle, I promise mm-hmm. you, bro. I, I've done nothing. And at the same time, it comes back around. But at the same time, bro, it, we don't, we don't, this is reality, bro. There's good and bad. So, like, you're going to get hit a couple of times. You might get cut up. You might get stabbed. But, like, you're going to be all right, though. You know what I'm saying? You're going to live the fight another day type. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So if more people start focusing on that time, time type, you know what I'm saying? You're going to... Yeah. Things will start moving in your life. Sure. Because if you just down all the time and into what, what what you listen... Like, what are you putting into your soul? What are you feeding into your, like, you know what I'm saying? Into your brain, your, your, in your subconscious, right? Whatever you listen to. Um, if you're talking about killing drugs and doing whatever, that's 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 all you... You're going to be amped up, just mm-hmm. just hyped all the time. You're running, you walking around, just all hella aggressive, listening to Young Boy all day. <laughs> and I can say that because, like, I used to listen to him, too, like, at a certain <laughs> time when I was in, I was I just realized myself, like, why am I always so amped up? I just want to fight, just angry. I got... I, I'm talking about I got ops. Nigga, I ain't got no ops. <laughs> what the heck, bro? Ain't nobody chasing me, bro. Like, what? I ain't... I ain't do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> Bro, yeah, what you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, facts. And mind you, it's nothing wrong with like and people think you gotta do all that to be hard or that's that's what you gotta do for respect, right? I gotta go out here and catch a body. I gotta go out here and do this and set like bro, ain't nothing wrong with having a nine to five, ain't nothing wrong with doing something or being an entrepreneur, believing yourself, going out, chasing something, getting out the mud, and then like still be a man, bro. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to do that to be hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? If if you always and that's insecurities too, like if I'm always walking around thinking I gotta prove myself to everybody, who who what are you trying to prove? And yeah. who are you trying to prove it to? And people feel that too. You can you can sense that. That's yeah, bro. Happy, bro. When so, you when you, you you know when someone's kind of like just they do it too much, bro. Like what are you what are you trying to prove? Like exactly. you just feel that, bro. Like facts. <laughs> They're not used to getting none. You know what I'm saying? They you know what I'm saying? They <laughs> they like man, bro. You gotta for one put your pride aside. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That, that, like growing up too, with all my OGs, like that was a thing. Like, now nah, you a man, you don't ask nobody. You do this, you. Now that's when pride kick in, bro. Pride is a very evil thing, bro. You know what I'm saying? If a man got pride, you don't know what he do to you. You see what I'm saying? A man, a man, will try and cut you in your back because he feel like the girl chose up on chose up on you, but he really liked her, but she chose up on you, but he he so prideful and mad, like he gonna take it all on you. Mm-hmm. But what you do? You ain't do nothing. She she chose you. Yeah, I feel like that's another thing too, bro. Men let let women or let you know what I'm saying like pussy like just run run you ragged, bro. If you think about it, bro. If we all just stop 
trying to just go have sex all the time, right? Think think about what you would do without sex, just for a second. Besides using it to like just go make a baby, right? What what are you going to this woman or to this other person? And like, what do you like? What do you have to talk about? What do you have to go about? What do you, what do you, what do you want to learn about this person? Or what? How can you benefit this person? How can you be a blessing to to this to this girl that you that you like? Right? You like her, so you should get to know her. You should do things, and you know what I'm saying. And there's nothing wrong with taking girl out, but also don't be a sucker though either. Like, don't let somebody play you. But you gotta recognize that. And I'm talking about uh, someone that actually cares about you. And then two, people gotta start paying attention to the signs, bro. Just pay attention to the signs. You feel me? Like, if somebody is only hearing about a certain time, or somebody is like not asking, like not to, like you gotta listen to what people are saying. If I'm just texting, you, hey, what you doing? Oh, I want to come see you, or let's. I want to do this. I want to do that. But Ain't making no type of, and that's why women, a lot of women don't respect men because yeah. niggas is out here saying stuff, being corny, and then when it comes time to do some, or like, oh, you can lay up and have sex with this girl, but you can't go hang out with her at the park. Yeah, per se, right? It's like, what, like, yeah, you know I'm saying that's foul, bro. She mm-hmm. want to hang, like, you just all up inside of her, but you can't spend yeah. some time with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta think, bro. Be be reasonable. How would you feel if somebody just came? You feel me? Just, just every time I came over, they played your PlayStation. That was it. And they got up and left. Right? It's like, dang, bro, you don't want to hang out. You want to eat. You know what I'm saying? You don't want a beer or something. Nah, bro, I just want to play. I just want to play your game. And after this, bro, I'm done. I'm gone. I just I played 2K4 and I'm out of here, man. Like, dang. But I thought you was my homie. I thought yeah. I thought we was people. Like, nah, bro. I just want your PlayStation. Yeah. So think about it, bro. All you doing is playing PlayStation with this girl. That's how she feels. She feeling play. So yeah. like. Then that's why women now, oh, yeah, bet. All right, so that's what y'all, you want you getting at this? Well, I'm going to get this. Mm. Says so you won't give me no time, or I'm going to get your money. Or I'm going to cause you, I'm going to be toxic. Like, mm-hmm. or I'm going to have me some fun, because cause why? Nigga, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's a big thing, I feel like, with that, bro. Like, Yeah. It's a vicious cycle right now, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. And to, and to stop the cycle, it's only one thing that's going to stop it, is love. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. Ain't nothing going to conquer hate. The only thing greater than that is love. Yeah. That's it. But- Love is painful. I ain't gonna lie to you. It is, bro. You gotta. You sound like you speak from experience. Hey, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm a lover at heart, but like, like I told you, bro, being vulnerable all the time, putting yourself out there, but you're gonna get cut, bro. I'm yeah. telling you, I've been cut a few, a lot of times, but it's like, you learn so much, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. You learn so much about yourself and into take time with yourself, bro. I take my own self out. I do it. I do a lot of stuff by myself. People are like, dang. And I said, like, people be like, oh, you, you going to the movie? I'm like, yeah, bro, I'm gonna see this movie. Who you going with? Nobody. Oh, bro, I, I'm at this restaurant. Oh, you about to go get something to eat? Where, who you going with? Nobody. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm by myself, bro. You feel yeah. me? Like, like I have I have friends, right? Bro, get out of a relationship. Two weeks later, he another one. Bro, get, bro, we'll be with that person for like a year or like six months. A month go by, bro, in another relationship. I'm like, mm. nigga. Yeah. How many, like, you feel me? Like, what are you doing? Chill. <laughs> Like just 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 have fun a little bit. Just yeah. just go out there, maybe date a little bit. Go in a couple of days. You know what I'm saying? Just hang out with some women. Just see what you like. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? But then too, you got to think like, what are you running from, bro? If you always if you always like, I need validation from somebody else, like from another person all the time, bro. You lose yourself. You don't even know who you are as a person. You don't know what you like. You don't know what habits or traits you might have. Because maybe you know what I'm saying that girl wasn't the problem. It really was you. Did you learn the lesson that you just went through with this with this person? You see what I'm saying? No, you didn't because now you just hopping into something else because why? You're sad, you're lonely, you're depressed. Like you gotta. That's why I say you gotta walk in purpose, bro. Mm-hmm. If you if you do something that's purposeful, that means something to you that means something to you, and you feel like you're making a difference out here in the world, then you're gonna feel you're gonna you're gonna be filled with more fulfillment and joy as you're going through life. You see what I'm saying? Like you can't you can't go around and not. Like you just you just a zombie out here walking around just a zombie. You don't mm-hmm. know what you're doing. You just out here just doing stuff. Yeah, you out here doing stuff and then doing stuff so much to the point where next thing you know you're dead. Mm-hmm. Now what? For sure, you're gone. I, you know, yeah. some, some people, some young people, be doing stuff out here playing with guns. Think it's it's funny getting shot, doing drugs, just just ODing, bro. I had a homegirl OD like you know what I'm saying. And, or sometimes people are, are so hurt they don't have any other outlet. That's why I'm just like, bro, you never know how you can impact somebody's life, bro. You never know what a, a, a young man, a young woman is going through and you out here being a dickhead and then they go back and kill themselves. All because you caught them whatever you just said. I don't know. You stupid, fat, ugly whore. Mm-hmm. Like, and now they, that, that was just the icing on the cake and now they gone. Mm-hmm. Or, or, 
they come back, blow you up, and everybody else in the building. Like, mm-hmm. you just, you got to, like, people got to start taking things for real. We all live in life. This is not a video game. This is not Call of Duty. This is not a reality show. This is not, you feel me, Atlanta's Housewives. Like, no, bro, this is a real world. And you have to start learning about yourself and start trying to figure out what you can do in the world to make a difference. What, when you die, what are people going to say about you? If people start thinking more like that, start thinking like, how can I impact? Even and you know, I got to be nothing big. People think you got to do everything on such a big scale. No, bro, start small. And just start out in your community. Start out at in your own neighborhood on your block. You know what I'm saying? Like, just have like, bro. When I was growing up, bro, we used to have block parties back in the west. Like, that was mm-hmm. like a big thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was cool. Let's just you and your neighbors go do something. Go go meet your neighbor, bro. Go knock on the door, ask for some sugar or something. I don't know. <laughs> be like, we having a pot, we having yeah. a barbecue. Y'all wanna, y'all wanna plate or something? Like, you feel me? That's how you get to know people. Do things with people, bro. People got like ever since COVID, bro. People forgot how to be people. We're all just out here like walking drones or robots and stuff, bro. We're so involved in our phones. And I'd say it's nothing wrong with being on your phone, but bro, have have a balance. You know what I'm saying? Have have a balance of this, a balance of work, balance of personal time, balance a uh, balance of family time, a balance, and then a balance for yourself. Time. Create time in, in like little pockets and space for yourself, too. Because as people, too, we need you need time to self reflect. You see what I'm saying? Go over uh, what I did wrong this year or this month. Um, how can I do? How can I be better? How? Uh, what improvements can I make to you know be a better person? Maybe be a better dad, be a brother, uh, a better brother, a nephew, sister, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend. And then too, the people that you surround yourself with is typically how you're going to end up being, mm-hmm. or typically how where, where you're going to end up. In life, bro, you should have you should have how you how you should judge your friends, bro. You should have somebody who's ahead of you, so that we can lead you to whatever whatever it is you want to do, right? Have somebody that's already in your field doing it. Like I said, a mentor. Have somebody that can help you navigate to you that way. Then take a step down. Have somebody that's just like you, trying to make it and do something. And y'all network and help each other, right? And then also have somebody who's below you, and you reach back and you help them out. That right there would keep you like pretty grounded, and then too at the same time, uh, don't forget like who your supporters are. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So that way you keep it like a, a good square, a good like yeah. little balance of okay, I got somebody ahead of me. Okay, cool. I got somebody that's right next to me that's running the race with me, and then I got somebody who's watching the race that's getting stretched and getting ready to run their race. Mm. So I'm gonna help them get some tips while I'm running and figuring stuff out. And then you got some people who can't run, who can't. They just are just subs there's people that just can sit there and support mm-hmm. right so then you also you do it for them because yeah. they can't do it yeah you see what i'm saying so yeah that seems like like where a lot of fulfillment can be found bro just that square bro that you mm-hmm. said especially passing shit down like to yeah people. yeah yeah people forget that bro yeah if you go back in history bro with tribes or indian people people like you know what i'm saying people like they pass in order for us to grow, you got to pass down and tell them and tell you, like, tell them your mistakes that you made in your race, bro. They need to know. So that way, when it's time for me to run my race, I know, OK, they the previous generation, they did this and that. They didn't work. And mm. the previous generation, they, OK, don't do that. We know not to do this. So find new errors to make. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't make the same ones. For sure. And then that, that helps you elevate. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then, too, you got to a lot of people, too. A lot of times people hold on to people that are so cancerous to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, as you grow, as you elevate, bro, you got to learn how to separate. In your 20s, bro, you're going to lose a lot of people in, in in life, either good or bad. Like, you're going to lose them. You can't hold on to everybody, bro. You can't take everybody with you. I ain't going to lie to you. Like, as much as we try or people call you fake and this, that, at the end of the day, bro, you got to take care of who's take care of you. Take care of somebody who, whatever you love, protect it. And then you got to just keep your head up and keep moving, bro. And just keep going. That's it. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing else to it. Damn. It's going to hurt, but you got to. Be strong, you know yeah, what I'm saying? You sure. a man, be strong. Yeah, and yeah. that's for anybody else, woman, man, it don't matter, be strong, bro. Keep your head up. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. And watch your surroundings, bro. Watch your surroundings and watch you letting your space. And care enough about yourself to, you know what I'm saying? Care about that. Cause when you don't, bro, you, like that's how you end up. Like you, like you ever know somebody, bro? And it's like, no matter what time of the year, no matter what month it is, no matter what season, it's like, they always is down bad. Like, Nigga always need a dub. Nigga always need somewhere to stay. Nigga, like, you just bad all year round, folks. Like, how that, you know what it's I'm not, saying? It's how not that? seasonal. It's like yeah, every Yeah, bro. It's, nah, you ain't just going through something, bro. You, you, nah, you, you choosing yeah. to be like this. You see what I'm saying? Like, so. 
Yeah. yeah. That's if I can tell you about anything, yeah, bro, do that yeah. for sure. Hell yeah. Keep your surroundings. Yeah, what is something that uh I, you feel like you could especially I mean going to the new year, happy new year everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh what do you feel like you you can improve on the most? <sighs> Man, that's a good one. Um like just one thing or like what what all whatever's been on your mind. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um I would say um, I started getting it towards the end of the year. I guess once I got out the army, I felt like I, I could really, but um, be more consistent and mm-hmm. like persistent and stuff. When I started applying that, I started growing so like fast, bro, and so like everything just started happening naturally. You know what I'm saying? Like just just putting in the work myself, and also like like doing stuff like for one, like for example, for me with content, like right, putting out videos at least like every day or every other day, like because I'll, I'll drop a video. I started getting like hella views, start like getting all comfortable, lackadaisical, mm-hmm. stop dropping, views start going down, or like whatever I'm doing, working out, trying to lose weight, getting better at basketball, like you know what I'm saying, whatever it is, whatever my goals are, um, stick with the goal, so that would be one, just keep, just keep going, um, two, I would say a big thing I'm, I'm going to try this year, um, as far as being consistent, persistent, um, I, I would say really like, really like, and you hear a lot of people say it's a cliche, but really enjoy the process, bro, like really just take time to live in the moment like capture the moment bro like and, and I, I feel like i've always lived like this that's who i am as a person like i said i chase opportunity when i see opportunity i just jump at it like never like lose that and then never like forget who you are mm-hmm. right so i think in when i was in the army i kind of lost myself like last year or somewhat and like i went through a lot had a lot of deaths in the family had a lot of people just, just going through a lot of different things bro found myself just sitting there just sad at one point um being in, and I'm speaking to people that's in the military. They understand what I'm talking about. Like, you, you have your leaders. You, you feel like you're like your family away from home. Like how they train you in the army and stuff. Like that's supposed to be your family and stuff. It's not your family, bro. They they don't really treat you like that. You know what I'm saying? You gotta find a good people to be with and never change who I am because of my surroundings. That's mm-hmm. that's one thing I'm gonna do. Like, cause I, I would tell myself like, dang, I'm I'm hurt. I'm hurt showing love to people. Bro. I'm getting done bad. Like I'm 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 being loyal. I'm I'm being a solid nigga, right? It don't matter, bro. But I have to learn, like, I can't fix whatever your issue is, right? However you come at me or whatever you did to me, it wasn't my fault. It's just you're going through something, Mm -hmm. right? So also I have to learn, like, people are in pain. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hurt people hurt people. So, like, really just watch my surroundings, bro, and just really... like really pay attention to what's it really like what's really important in life bro like what's really important you know what i'm saying if it's not gonna keep it's not life or death like you can't take it to the grave which like what's really important and what do i want to be remembered as when i leave this earth bro so uh, that's one thing i think my goals are this year like who i wh- who what do i want to be and what is my purpose and figuring that out and going about that mm-hmm. yes i mean i think everybody should that's one of the most important questions i think what do, what do i want to be remembered for at the end of the mm-hmm. day Cause I mean, yeah. What? It, how can you inspire somebody? Yeah. Bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I, so I tried it out last year, right? I um, I asked some of my friends that really know me. I asked them like, have have I ever inspired you before, bro? Or have I ever, like, you know what I'm saying? When you look at me, like, have I ever inspired you to do anything? That was just the question. Have I ever inspired you? Like, just try it out with your bro. See what they say. Mm-hmm. Like, you'd be surprised what they say back. Yeah. People tell me I have because one time one of my friends he played football, right? Nigga, cold, bro. He should be in the league. No mm-hmm. cap. But, like, he was going through a tough time, right? And um, kind of, like, went to quit or do whatever. And, I and like, I was just talking to him. I was like, nah, bro, don't don't quit. Like, just, you know what I'm saying? Keep keep going to practice, bro. Like, do your workouts, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you didn't get it at the first combine, bro, just go. Just do it again, mm-hmm. bro. Don't don't give up because, you know what I'm saying, people hating on you this, down and third. So, I feel like um, never, like I said, show, like, no matter what, bro, show love to your, like, people. And I, I I'm trying to, like, Show people that I care about their flowers while they still here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's that's like a that's like a big thing for me, bro. Everybody I see, bro, no matter who it is, I'm just gonna continue to show love, regardless of what I got going on in my life, bro. I realize like you gotta, you just gotta, you gotta. I gotta keep being me. Mm-hmm. I can't change up or let other people change me because um, what they did was foul or whatever. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I I turn into this wicked or evil person and go down a path that I'm not really even trying to be on for real. But because I'm because I got hurt. Or because I went through whatever I went through, I don't know how to, you know, navigate and take time, like, just for myself. 
Ain't nothing mm-hmm. wrong with being selfish with yourself, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Take care of it before you, like, explode or something. Mm. Yeah. For sure. Damn, bro. You got some some jams, my guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. My fault. Yeah, man. It's a, no, it's a lot, bro. Just, it's, no, it's life, bro. Man. You, you, uh, nah, it's, I mean, it's a really, really good episode, bro. Yeah, uh, nah. Yeah. And I'm sorry, bro. My, my Like, this, t- this timing was shit, bro. I wish I could, like... Nah, <laughs> it's good, bro. Like, I understand, yeah. man. Like, I understand what you're going through, bro. It's yeah. cool. I mean, I really appreciate yeah. you for even doing this. Everything you, how you feeling, what you battling with, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's commitment right there. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. respectable right there. So, like, I'm going to just tell you, keep doing that. You feel me? You ever need somebody to talk to you, want to, you know what I'm saying, talk about the content stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, you can collab, talk, you know what I'm saying? For just sure, talk it bro. Because I know. As a as a creator, bro, it gets it gets hard out here, bro. It's it's it's, it's very tedious work, you know what I'm saying. Luckily, sure, you bro. got some support, you know what I'm saying, with your man's back yeah. there. But you know, uh, it's 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 it's, and it's, it's, it's competitive too, bro. bro I ain't gonna lie to you, it's yeah. competitive. But don't let that deteriorate you. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's what you want. You gotta keep going, bro. Everybody ain't gonna make it through, but if you stay strong with it. You gonna make it to wherever you're trying to go, bro. That's sure. just, and that's just facts, bro. Mm-hmm. You just gotta keep putting in what you. Whatever you and it's, it's it's and it's crazy to hear this because people like old people say this all the time. What you put in is what you get out, bro. What you put in is really what you get out. I mm-hmm. swear, bro. I promise you. Like, yeah. I even noticed with myself just being lazy, even with the, like the gym, man. Content like with my work. If you buy in, bro. Like if you take them same things, like you say, you used to who, right? You play, yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, bro. You take them same, uh, them same principles. You feel me? And apply sure. it to like your life. You get ahead. You yeah. Get what get I always ahead. thought thought about, like, the game will never cheat you when it came to basketball. Like, mm-hmm. if you put the work in, like, you were, like, it was going to show and you're going to be, like, the game was going to love you back type shit. But if yeah. you didn't, like, it wasn't, you, you there was going to be times throughout the game, like, you just know you weren't in the gym, bro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you get facts. exposed out there. Nah, you, it's bad. Especially <laughs> yeah. nowadays, bro. A little kid do you bad, bro. Yeah. Like, like, it's, it's sick, bro. I seen some 11 year olds. I was like, dang, it's, yeah. hey, man, it's crazy. But yeah, for sure, whatever you put in, you know what I'm saying? It definitely shows. And mm-hmm. then, too, like, just be accountable, bro. Like, I think if people just be more like, like, one thing I say, if you notice, like, in, in, in different cultures, right? Different races, like, in the Asian culture, honor is such a big thing with the, like, Asians, right? Mm-hmm. If you If you use that, like, to like to your advantage like with you like if you do things that's honorable try to be like uh an honorable person bro people like people are gonna respect like, you know what i'm saying it's it's like people have to respect you and if not it's like you know like that person is really just For bad. Sure. like nobody wants to be like them right mm-hmm. they, he just hates his life you yeah. see what i'm saying so the more better you try to do bro i, I just know you, you put you do good good gonna come back to you and that's sure. just that's facts Simple all that. day yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, for sure. And we gotta we gotta get up with you in Cali too, bro. If you're still out there. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> most definitely, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I've Cali. never been to San Fran, bro. I would. How long? How much longer are you gonna be out there? You think? Uh, so if 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 uh, right now I'm on vacation, so like if I go, when I go back to school, school starts back in February. If I end up going back or whatnot, um, I'll be out there until like I think when we graduate, or school's over like in May. I think May? In May. So yeah, but even then, I probably if I'm out there, I probably slide back down to SoCal. Mm-hmm. You definitely got. I, I'm not gonna say don't go yet. Definitely go to San Francisco. Definitely vibe. Um, yeah. And this is the Bay Area period. And then definitely go down to SoCal. Like, like I guess yeah. I'm originally I'm from San Diego. That's where I was yeah. born. That's that's where I'm from. Like San Diego is hands down the best city in California. Yeah. That's, I've heard some really good things. For yeah, sure. bro. San Diego's nice, and it's the most expensive city in California now. For real? Yes, bro. It just passed San Francisco. Damn. It's like a lot of people move there, huh? To San Diego. Yeah, but San Diego yeah. too is it's like it's a military town, bro. Oh, so right, like yeah. it's it's the navy's out there, mm-hmm. but it's nice though. Like the beach, the weather, like bro. Imagine waking up every day, perfect, perfect weather. Like, yeah, seventies, cool breeze and a little sunny. It don't get it don't get no higher than like eighty. Damn, and that's a hot day. Yeah, eighty with a breeze. Like, what about right now? Like during the winter? Oh, it's cold. Yeah, yeah, it's cold. <laughs> it's cold. Bro. It's cold right now. Yeah, bro. it's because you, you got you buy the water, bro. It's and that Cali water is like cold as fuck too, bro. But yeah. I don't, bro. I don't get in the water unless yeah. it's hot yeah. outside. And even if it's hot, bro, the water still is like yeah. cold. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, did you ever wild. surf out there? Do so try okay, it? yeah, I tried to. I, I did a boogie board. Oh okay, I okay. got on the boogie board when I was yeah. little. Um, definitely fell a lot. It's uh-huh. cool. Uh, I'm, I'm messing with. I could surf when I was in San Francisco. He was hooping. Yeah. Broke a hoop too. But um yeah, nah. Surfing is hard, bro. You gotta yeah. be strong. Like you gotta have a strong core too. Core. Yeah, yeah, bro. Because you gotta swim all the way out there and too if if you fall or whatever, you gotta swim, you gotta get your board, like it's a lot to and it's too it's a lot of like core to balance yourself on mm-hmm. the board, yeah. on the water, like while the wave is like coming up, like yeah. 
Yeah, bro, I, 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 I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I couldn't do it. Nah, for drunk. sure. So, um, yeah, bro. But like I said, bro, it was a it was a pleasure, bro. This is the first time we ever meet each other in person. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact, it's yeah. the first time we ever <laughs> met, bro. Like, yeah. like I said, bro. Like you know, what I'm saying it's all about energy. How you carry yourself. You know what yeah. I'm saying, bro. You walk with some confidence. You know what I'm saying. Believe in yourself. Yeah, yeah. You make it far in life. You for know sure. What I'm saying and too, like, just treat people, bro. Treat people how you want to be treated. Facts. Don't get me wrong. People are gonna be, are not always gonna be your friend. People are not, but you if you if you increase your value as a person, think about like how much more valuable you'll be to other people, mm-hmm. and how much they'll want to keep you around, regardless of whatever you're doing. Yeah, like for sure. You know what I'm saying? Your value you can you, you can go anywhere. People are always gonna remember the person like whoever's the most valuable on the team, bro. Mm-hmm. If you had a job at a company, bro, you working. And you putting in hours, you helping everybody with their job and doing yours, doing good numbers, you know what I'm saying? On time. Like that thing I'm like, that's a good dude right mm-hmm. there, man. Yeah, yeah. We know John, yeah, he man. Yeah. Always on time, got a smile on his face. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He come here and bring us donuts sometimes. <laughs> like, you know, cool, cool dude. Yeah. And then you got uh you got <laughs> you got David coming in, bro, late, stink. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just and then too, just look bad. You know what I'm saying? Don't take care of his he don't look presentable, he don't look like he care about himself. Like yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying it just and especially nowadays it, it's it's not it's not very hard to really stand out as like a solid dude a solid person because yeah. yeah. you you just kind of you do the little things and like it's gonna set you apart Facts. from a lot of people fundamentals you know? yeah fundamentals bro fundamentals for sure set you apart because mm-hmm. everybody's so focused yeah I think everybody's so focused on the everybody's focused on the big picture right so if we all see this big picture and then you're so focused on that you forget the little things you know what i'm saying that take like on the way up to the big picture on the side things in the middle mm-hmm. things even just to get started a lot of people don't even get started whatever they're trying to do just because you know they they they're so afraid of to of of success like yeah. you can't be afraid of success or you can't be afraid of something good that's happening in your life bro don't ever be afraid to like let's say you might got a good girl right this is back on all this shit thing real quick if you if you got a good girl or something and she's showing you all the rights, you know what I'm saying? But you're so used to all the trauma and, and stuff you went through before, instead of like talking to her and telling her what you've been through, um, and kind of explaining like how hard, bro. Women, I ain't gonna lie to you, women, bro. If you just talk to them, bro, they will help you out so much, bro. Mm-hmm. They make things so much easier because we as men, bro, we 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 always do stuff the hard way. Yeah. I don't know why, bro, but we do. But like, if you just you know what I'm saying, do that, it, it it'll help you out a lot yeah. more. It sure. you a lot more, bro. Yeah. Uh, before we go though, mm-hmm. since you're in acting school, bro, you got any? You you doing any impressions, any impersonations, or uh, are you good at anybody in particular? Ah man, let me think. I'm trying to think, <laughs> bro. That's a good one. Oh. Uh, <laughs> if not, bro, it's cool. I put you on the spot, but I was nah, you good. You good. I want to say uh, <clears throat> Denzel, maybe. Um, but nah, I don't think I'm that good at it though, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, maybe we could do next it off time. camera right now. Yeah, off camera. Okay. <laughs> I got you next time for sure. Yeah, but uh, yeah, bro. Whenever you're you're coming through El Paso, bro, we gotta uh definitely get you on again. And then uh, yeah, I facts. mean, we eventually some of the goal is to do these on the road too, bro. We mm-hmm. want to eventually like yeah, travel, travel. And do some of these. So. Nah, fact. You definitely gotta come to the city, come to Houston. Yeah. Or when I'm in Cali, pull up. Yeah, for sure, bro. I'm trying to do a lucky. Trying to, I might do a public interview this weekend. Like, yeah. Before I leave, like just to. <laughs> shit, we might let us know, bro. We'll pull, we'll pull up with you. Yeah, yeah. Pull up, <laughs> man. Yeah. yeah, pull up, man. It'll be fun as hell. It'll be lit, bro. It'll be lit. <laughs> I go, it'll be fun, bro. It's a lot of fun, bro. And then what I'm about to get back to it too is like doing skits. Like a lot of people, they like my skits. Yeah. So that's something that he wants to get into. Oh, word? Bro. Yeah. He can low key act, bro. He just he, he needs the confidence, bro. He needs the. Man, bro, we could do some videos, bro. Like, you could be in some of my videos. We could do some on the front, like a TikTok or something. Yeah, bro, like Work. He has. I mean, he he writes down like he has ideas, bro. He just it's just we need to we need to fucking do it. Yeah. Oh yeah. See yeah. See man, this is why I really wish, bro, you would have popped up. Like when I seen you and I seen Eddie, I was like, who is this little nigga? Who this little Mexican dude? I was like, ah oh, man, little bro. I said, I said, oh, he getting he getting right. I was like, man, I wish you would have been active when I was here. Like, yeah. Twenty nineteen through twenty twenty two, bro. Cause like no wrong, and I know some other like YouTubers out here, like my little bro Jay. Uh, that's another one. I can't remember his name right now, but uh, it's like them two. Them only, yeah. I think one of them moved away. He and they are like young, like fresh out like high school type. Mm-hmm. Like he's like one of them is like nineteen. Yeah, I think Jay because he hooped too. I think he's like twenty one. 
Uh, I think bro, like twenty one. How old yeah. are you? Twenty three. Twenty three. Twenty. I just turned twenty four. You just turned twenty four? Yeah. Oh, Kobe year. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You about to? You about to? Yeah. You about to? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, twenty four, bro. We hit twenty five. It's gonna creep up on you, bro. You're like a senior right now. <laughs> or you're like a you're like a sophomore in your twenties. Yeah. yeah. You're about to hit your junior year once you mm-hmm. get to twenty five, twenty six, bro. Yeah. Your body start moving a little different. <laughs> yeah. Bro. I I didn't uh I didn't I didn't really step on to. Like, I didn't really start, I mean, I was doing YouTube for a while, but I mm-hmm. really didn't start, like, really going until, like, this year. And I see honestly, you was the, traveling. Yeah, bro, yeah. I, was in, I was in Thailand last year for, yeah, bro, for a good while. I, yeah, how was that, bro? You you was living overseas. You Yeah, you was going crazy. I was like, yeah, bro. I seen this channel, bro. I was like, this, where was he at? Yeah, bro, that was Thailand, bro. I mean, for real? I mean was I, that honestly, like? I, I wanted to do that. That was my, like, I would have been planning that for a while, bro. Mm-hmm. I wanted to uh, be out there doing travel vlogs. And, and, bro, there's some, the first four videos I did, bro. Mm-hmm. Uh, they fucking went off, bro. At like one of them, mm-hmm. like one of the first ones I released out there, hit like eighty five thousand. Uh, now YouTube, that's kind of rough. That's kind of tough, bro. Like YouTube is a harder, views? bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, eighty five thousand. Yeah, it's yeah, a bro. Lot, bro. And so, uh, but nah, bro. It, I was out there alone, bro. So I, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't realize, yeah. like, like it, 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 team. yeah, it got, it got a little. I wasn't expecting it to be as tough as it was, mm-hmm. and I just don't think I was, I was. In the point in my life, I was ready mm. exactly for something like that. But, I mean, I came back, bro, and then that's kind of how I got started in the pod, bro. So, at the time when I came back, I was very, like, kind of disappointed, bro, because mm-hmm. I felt like I missed out, like, an opportunity and shit. But, I mean, I don't think if I w- didn't go through that, I probably wouldn't have, like, like started this. So, I mean, that's kind of how I looked at it. So Yeah, yeah it's yeah because mm-hmm. if you never would have... Okay, what made you even want to... So you, so when you're out there, you want to be like a vlogger? Yeah. So all right, well, the way it got started was my brother and his wife were out there in Asia, and they mm. were teaching English, and I was just seeing their YouTube videos all the time, bro. So, mm. and honestly, bro, like cause I graduated early from college, and I don't mm. know why, bro. I just wanted to like just leave, bro. I was, I was kind of like I don't know. I was just to myself, bro. I was. America sucks, bro. Yeah, like <laughs> low key. Bro. Have you have you been international? Or? Yeah, yeah. Bro. I mean Afghanistan, obviously, but bro, I was in the army. Okay, so I never been anywhere until I joined the army. But being in the army, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I, I'm not gonna say it's like a bad thing, cause bro, I, I went to Afghanistan. Yeah, but I went to Kuwait, mm. uh, Dubai. My, my company went to Dubai. We went to we went to some place I can't even say for. I don't even know how to say it. Yeah. But just seeing how people like are out there, and even meet people that's from like overseas and like people that's not from America, bro. It's a lot different, bro. And like the world, like it's more. I think people are more like people are more like they feel bad for us. Like you know how we feel bad for them. Like they feel yeah. bad for us because nah, like, for real, they're more like they can do stuff like. Like they interact, like social interaction is like a regular thing. Like yeah. we're the on- Americans are the only people who like find it weird for me to say hello to somebody walking down the street. Yeah. Like that's weird, bro. Yeah. Like it's really weird for us to even be like so like everybody's so shut off and so closed off. Like that's not that's not how it was, yeah. bro. But it's nice over there, bro. Mm-hmm. I think people are more like real people are more genuine down to earth. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So you don't find like a lot of people that's genuine. Yeah. That was the experience I had in Thailand, bro. Like literally, mm-hmm. like when people got off of work there. It's it's a normal thing to be with your your family and friends like mm-hmm. having beer and like it, it's Social not even life. it's not even an occasion, bro. It's literally yeah. that they're gonna get off of work and they're just gonna go like just be with each other, bro, and like just enjoy a meal. It's like it's crazy how it is, bro. Like they and even though they're not as a uh, well off as far as like financially and like I mean it's still a third world country. Like mm-hmm. they seem very. Happy. happy bro yeah. it's it's not in the envy like a lot of them don't want to come to america like you people think people that live in america think that like oh it's don't get me wrong america's dope bro but mm-hmm. people that live over here there's like i would never want to move to america type shit it's like yeah. it's crazy people are miserable bro. people yeah. <laughs> we, they come over here they're like what's wrong with like why are everybody so just why like bro people that's it like how you just said like you get off work people over that's overseas bro they don't even want to talk about work like yeah. work is work like i don't want to be here like you yeah. know what i'm saying they go home and they 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 enjoy life like yeah. you know what I'm saying I'm lit they're out there living life bro the real like real qualities uh, qualities of yeah. life like bro family your friends like you know what I'm saying like it's a lot of love out there like people treat people like like people mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and then too like they go out and they do stuff out in nature out in like in the world like yeah. you know what I'm saying the world we live in we're so like focused on technology and being so advanced like yeah. it's cool but then at the same time like yeah you know what I'm saying you you, you lose and you lack like the true qualities of why you're here. You know what I'm saying? We, sure. we forget that life, life is a gift. You know what I'm saying? There's no guarantees for anything. There's no guarantees you're going to make it at what you're doing. There's no guarantees that your family, your mother is going to be here for X amount of years. You don't know. You know what I'm saying? We're on borrowed time right now. We don't know when is going to be our time to go. Mm. So it's like, 
But people think about that. And then, too, like, as you're going through life, bro, you got to remember the next generation after you, bro. You got to see the bigger picture. It's not about you and me. It's about everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to live for the next man next to you type. Mm-hmm. Like, don't if you just live for yourself, bro, you're not going to get far in life. Because yeah. self, you know what I'm saying? You're not, you, you can only go so far, bro. But you, you'll feel more driven to help somebody else out. Like, especially, let's say you got, like, a little sister, little brother, or, like, your mom or your aunt. You know what I'm saying? Let's say you're doing something for them, but also you want it for yourself, too, and they support you and whatever that is, you're going to go, like, ten times harder, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be focused. You got a good support team. And then, too, when it's not, like, when it's when it's their turn, when it's the next person's turn, you know what I'm saying? Don't hate on somebody that's it's their time. You know what I'm saying? Let's say somebody's time right now, they, they going through whatever they going through, and, you know what I'm saying, they shining right now. But that's your man's. You know what I'm saying? That's your man's. That's your homegirl. That's your whoever. Or even your spouse, bro. Don't 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 be jealous. Don't be envious. You know what I'm saying? Be, like, show them love, too. Be happy for them, you know what I'm saying, that they make it. Because let, let that be inspiration or encouragement to you and motivate you to get on your stuff so you can, like, mm-hmm. when your time come, I'm going to shine just like how they were shining. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But while they there, I'm going to enjoy it. With, like, enjoy the time with that person. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like... Everybody don't get that chance to do whatever it is, yeah. you know what I'm saying, once they make it. And I realized that with some of my friends I got that was like celebrities or, you know what I'm saying, millionaires or whatever. Like, you can't be hating, bro. You got to you gotta, you gotta, you gotta wait your turn for real. And then, yeah. too, stop. A lot of times, too, nowadays, bro, we're, nobody's original no more. Nobody's original. If if this person does something that pops, the next person will do the same thing that they're doing. It's like, bro, like, what happened to being creative and being an individual, being unique, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Do something that's bonafide. Like, do do something that nobody else has done. And granted, it is hard nowadays because a lot of things have been done. But I would say nowadays, whatever it is, and if, if it has been done, use it. Like, do it. If that's what you want to do, do it. But do it your own way, your own style. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You don't have to do it like how everybody else does. And then, too, however you do it, um, it might be someone else that likes how you do it. And that wants to do like you or that wants that wants to see how you do it and they like how in the space or whatever you created and then they support you and then now you built a community yeah. of people. You see what I'm saying? For sure. And then let's say you got a friend that does something in another community. Like I said, like like you do podcasts, right? I do public interviews. My homeboy do pranks, right? But we're like let's say we become like we're a group and we all stay in this house together and we all support each other. Like that's 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 how you grow. Like mm-hmm. you know, different groups that you see on YouTube and stuff. That's, yeah. That's how you grow. You know what I'm saying? Don't let for one, don't let a a girl or somebody that's not in the group come in and mess it up. I've seen that happen. That's yeah. recently happened with uh Damn. What's that nigga name? Uh King King Sid. Like you mm. seen that. I don't know if you kept Yeah, bro, like stuff like that, bro. Like don't for a guy, bro, don't ever fall out behind no no female, bro. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's and that's really I feel like a lot of times with men, like a lot of times whatever group, same groups, whatever, it's always behind some type of woman or somebody always getting you know what I'm saying? Don't do not do that, bro. It's 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 very hard to... It's easier to say than it is, like, to do, but, yeah, don't ever do that. Mm-hmm. And then, too, that's what, that's what happens when you got to have some values to you, bro. If your man's messing with a female, bro, stop 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 going around messing with the same pussy, bro. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. That's just nasty. <laughs> yeah. Like, bro, y'all, y'all just passing around. Whatever y'all passing around, just dirty. Just dirty dick <laughs> niggas. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, what the heck? Nah, bro. Like, if, if you got a shorty, bro, and that's... Yeah, bro, like, ain't nothing wrong if you, you know what I'm saying? If that's what y'all do, y'all running train, okay, cool, but, bro, like, at the end of the day, bro, you got to stand, like, I've always, like, I've never really gotten to it with my homies about no females for real because, like, I don't, if if I'm talking to somebody, right, or if you're talking to somebody, I just, just leave them alone. Yeah. I treat them like a sis. That's, that's sis, bro. Even if y'all break up, I just leave it alone, bro. Yeah. It's just, especially if that's my, if, if you, especially if we still friends or whatever. Just leave it alone, bro. It, it just makes things so much easier, bro. Just have some morals and values, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this generation, bro, no respect, no morals, no values, bro. Just just doing stuff. Yeah. Just out here just doing stuff. That's what I'm saying, bro. Just just doing stuff. It ain't got no guidance. See what I'm saying? But then, too, you got to you gotta think, bro. As you get older and as you become the man that you're going to become in this world, bro, you got to think, like, you had, I don't know if you did, if you made it, but anyway, you had people that was above you, like OGs. Like, I had a lot of OGs that raised me, bro. So, like, how I am who I am now, like, I guess you could, like, I had somebody at the gym at Beast, bro, the other day, nigga called me OG. I was like, what? <laughs> but I started really, I'm like, bro, I'm at the age, I just turned 26, I'll be 27 in March. Mm. But I'm at the age now, like, like, yeah, bro, you, I'm, I'm an unk. Like, people call me unk, I got, you know what I'm saying, I got some nieces, but even, like, people in the world, like, that's younger, coming on, I think, I'm like, dang, like, is it that time now? Like, <laughs> I'm like, dang, I was just 19, I was just 21, I was just yeah. 24, like, I ain't there no more, bro, Pe- <laughs> you know what I'm saying, peaking yeah. up, but... You got to start setting aside, bro. Start really thinking, like, what you want to do. Like, you got people looking up to you. You got people looking at you. And, and then, too, like, I think my coaches always tell me, bro, like, 
You never know who's watching. And they, they talk about scouts. But then also in life, bro, you never know who's watching you, bro. Kids, peers, older people, people that's hating on you, people that love you, want to support you. Or some people, bro, you might be somebody's hope to make it, bro. Like, let's say they they, want, they was thinking about starting their own computer business, bro. But you out here doing your podcast. And they're like, man, he doing it. He, he doing this. He working out. I see you be running. You know what I'm saying? Losing weight. Like, dang, bro. He, you know what I'm saying? You motivating. It's, it's inspiring to see that. So, you got to think, stay on top of your craft, and, and keep working at it. You ain't got to be the best right now, bro, but at least you're getting started. Mm. You know what I'm saying? At least you got the ball ball rolling. You're going to get better as time, bro. Like, people that's great that I realize I watch and see, bro, nobody was who they was when they started. They put the – they work in. They they walk the, the milestones. They reach goals. And then they became the person who they were supposed to become. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And also, don't discredit things that bad that happen in your life. Those things needed to happen in order you, for you to become who you are right now. And then also you take those lessons and those things that happen to you in your family, in your friend's life, and you use those to your advantage to get ahead and pass it on to the next generation. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's it, man. And that's a wrap for episode number 24. 24? 24. I'm 24. I'm 24 and 24. Hey, yo. You know what I mean? That's how we that's get down, crazy, man. Bro. Bro, everybody has had a coincidence with the the episode numbers, bro. It's crazy. Uh, I forgot what the like, there, but there's been a lot of coincidence, bro, like that. But that's that's dope. Even with, uh, with Alex, he had just yeah, he's like, oh, my birthday's the twenty second, like yeah. just type shit, like. But that's For cool, bro. But um, bro, wait, how many? Oh, my fault. Wait, who? No. How many people have you went? Um, how many people you interviewed this year since it started? Am I the first one? Uh, this year, yeah, you're the first one. Oh, hey, yeah, I'm saying, hey, bro, look, you bring in the year <laughs> right, well, height, bro. You dig yeah. what I'm saying? He gonna get you right, bro. I'm yes, telling sir. you, man. <laughs> yeah, bro. If it ain't hype, it ain't right. That's the slogan, man. Hey, don't steal. It's copyrighted. You know what I'm saying? I got my LLC, bro. I'm coming for you. <laughs> hey, you know, I had to make that put that on the shirt, man. Facts. No, that's what that's what I wanted. To, I wanted to, bro. I yeah. wanted to. Oh, another thing I want to. Oh, where? Yeah. Hey, hey, I'm with it, bro. I'm with it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. If it ain't hype, it ain't right, bro. That's that's the slogan, bro. Yeah. What were you gonna say though? Oh yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Make sure yeah, clip this too. Yeah. I, I need this one, bro. Uh, so. Ever since, bro, like, another thing, too, ever since I started, like, content, or even before, like, when I got back from Afghanistan, right, this is whole thing, like, I'm famous for it, right? Apparently, I'm famous in Africa. Really? Like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, 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 it's bad. I mean, it's good, but it's bad. Like, <laughs> so, a lot of people use my face to scam, like, women and stuff, right? So, I get all these DMs constantly, <laughs> constantly on every, like, bro, if you type my name, if you type in Hype Man Prince, bro, I swear, a, a million things will pop up. Like, they, I, I've been told I'm on... Every dating app, Tinder, Hinge, BLK, uh, Bumblebee, or something like that. What the fuck? Uh, it's like hella TikTok accounts, Instagram accounts, Facebook accounts. I seen a, I, had, I, see, I ran into a few on Twitter. I don't think it's that big on Twitter, but it's for sure Instagram and stuff. And the only reason why I haven't verified my account is because, bro, I grew up like, you know what I'm saying? Before they changed the rule, you can pay for your blue check. I was in the era like you have to work hard and yeah. get to your 10k and then you know or whatever and you get your your yeah. check. So nigga, I did all this work. I want my check, Instagram. <laughs> yeah, give me my check, please. Yeah, all these catfish accounts, bro. So like, yeah, I'm notorious for that. Um, That's crazy. And, why? Why you're like? Why do you know why that happened? It's just one of your videos or like just bro. It's just okay. So so how it came to mind? So you remember in 2020, right? When or like 2019, 20, no 2020 when COVID happened and when TikTok first came out, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, when I, and if you're in the military, they were told, like, you couldn't be on TikTok. Like, you had to get off because, like, Chinese was using mm-hmm. what accounts to get whatever information from, like, the U.S., right, from the satellites or something like that. But anyway, um, I got back. I remember this, like, it was yesterday, bro. I got back. I was in El Paso. I was literally on Dyer, on the block. You know what I mean? That's why I, that's why I stayed in Northeast, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Northeast baby. Nah, we are, too. We are, too. Oh, where? Oh, y'all from the North Side, right? Oh, oh bro. We, we just kind of ah. moved to the, we moved to the East Side, what, like, senior year? Sorry, engineer, but okay. nah, for sure. That's our, that's our, that's our neighborhood for sure. Yeah, yeah. bro. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? People always like, oh, it's not safe. I'm like, bro, look, man, ain't nothing wrong being on the north, bro. Y'all, y'all crazy, nah, bro. bro. I love it. Yeah, bro. I love the north. But uh, anyway, um, shout out, shout out, shout out to Demo, man, my nigga <laughs> Gully. But uh, <laughs> what's it called? Uh, um, oh yeah. So look, I got back right. I'm on Dyer, bro. I'm literally sitting at that. Uh, at the store at uh you know where the car wash is at right now mr car wash on dyer yeah so i was like across the street in front of uh at some store i forgot what store that is but i was sitting there bro and this girl she was also in the army but she was like famous on like tiktok right and so she said some girl like dm'd her trying to find somebody 
because I was trying to find somebody and the person was me. But the person she was talking to had my pictures and screenshots of me like in the military in my uniform and stuff. Now, mind you, a lot of people, this happens, this is like, this is common in people in the military. People will um, use your account because you're a soldier or whatever and they like screenshot and like make fake accounts on you, right? Mm. That's that's regular, okay? But for me, it's like, they don't even use the pictures of me in the military. They use everything. Like, <laughs> they use my pictures from the army, from my civilian life, my, me like hooping, even videos. So it started, somebody DM'd her, somebody DM'd the girl on on um, TikTok, right? And then the girl from TikTok, one of one of my followers that followed me on Instagram followed the same girl, the content creator on TikTok, and said, oh, I know his Instagram. Because I, I didn't have a TikTok. I ended up deleting it. I didn't have a TikTok. So I wasn't even on TikTok, right? And so she DM'd me and was like, hey, this girl, blah, 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 somebody make fake county on TikTok. And I got the message. I seen it. I was like, all right, whatever. Like, I don't really care. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, so what? Like. We're like, okay, and then too, I didn't know if she was being for real. I didn't even know if that page was real. I'm like, I don't even know you. Like, mm-hmm. you just follow me. I don't even know who you're real. That's another thing. I don't know if you're real or not. So, whatever. So then the girl's page, she went on Instagram and DM me and sent me screenshots of what the other girl from TikTok had asked her. And I was like, oh, wait, so this is real? <laughs> I was like, oh, snap. She's like, no, you need to make make a video and like say, and mind you, this is when I first just started my YouTube channel, right? Everything was going good, bro. I was so mad I deployed because right when I was doing good numbers like on my on my um, YouTube and I was picking, I was getting like a lot of attraction. I got deployed and yeah. then I didn't post like a video for like a whole year and then I yeah. fell off. But I mean, I got it back. But yeah. anyway, um, that happened and so I made her, I made a TikTok, um, and then I made a response to the video that the girl made about trying to find me. Right, so it's like a whole storyline. <laughs> so I responded to it, bro. Instantly, like, like. Oh, hella like thousands of views. I'm like, oh mm-hmm. snap! So I was like, okay, this is cool. I was like, alright, bet. So I keep yeah. making, keep making videos about this, explaining. It. It's like, but I didn't know, I didn't realize it had been happening to so many people, and that when I made the account and I did the video, like everybody was like saying that they had been scammed by somebody, and then people really thought it was me, like because <laughs> women were saying they said like the accounts were like, oh, I'm still, I'm in, I'm overseas, I'm deployed. Can you send me a care package? Send me this. People were sending like. Somebody told me they sent somebody two hundred dollars, somebody five hundred dollars, somebody sent a care package. I'm like, man, y'all getting yeah. all this stuff off my <laughs> face, like, but nobody's supporting the real me. I'm just like, bro, send <laughs> no it to the cap, send bro. it to my address. You feel me? If y'all want to send some bread? Send it to me. Send it to the real hype man prince, bro, where I can be used, funded, and you know, go to go to. You know what I'm saying? Get distributed correctly. <laughs> yeah, y'all out here getting finesse, and, and this is my other thing too. It's a lot of older women. On there, right? Mm-hmm. That claim to get finesse, but I'm just like, obviously, like, but you know, so you see some accounts, bro, and you can just tell, like, okay, this, yeah, like, it's a little sketchy. They look yeah. a little sus, you know what I'm saying? But some people can't, like, some really, people, yeah. I think, no, this, and, okay, I saw well, some people, are like, okay, I, I granted they can't tell this, that, and third. And then some people told me, like, before, even somebody, like, they will call, they would do the FaceTime check, right? They have mm-hmm. a video chat them on Instagram or whatever. And they said, like, the, it was a video and it was like, it was a picture of me and it was like moving, my mouth was moving, but. Like it was like glitchy or something. It was it was only up there for like a sec, like a, like a few seconds, and then they, they close out the out the out the video chat and be like, nowadays they can do it to like where they can have they have a picture or video of you and like look like it's talking. Damn. And it's like you, but it's not. But then my whole thing is like, you know, FaceTime clear, like it's like HD. Yeah. That stuff's not clear, but I get it. But at the same time, I was like, nah, bro. But I, it's crazy that people can like video chat somebody without having that person on yeah, the phone. Yeah. Like that's fucking crazy. And this is before AI. Like, yeah. I was like, whoa, that's wild. <laughs> so I'm famous, like I'm famous, like in Nigeria. I got like a lot, of, like a lot of my fan base, like a lot of my people supporters. They come from overseas. Like, I, mean, I got people that's in like out here, like in the states. Uh, I think majority of people is like come from Houston. I got a lot of people from El Paso. Yeah. I mean, that's where I started, and then people back in Cali. But then, like, I look at my analytics. A lot of people in United Kingdom. Mm-hmm. I didn't talk to people. Some, I didn't talk to a couple people. Like when I go live, I'll like. Let them come in the video, yeah. like on live. It'd be from like London. Yeah, I, I do notice you go live like pretty often. Yeah, yeah. that's that's another a good way to grow too. You yeah. gotta go live, show people, especially in my case because people think everything's fake. Yeah, and so yeah, I do that. I talk to people, hear their stories, and that's another thing I'm gonna start doing. Like I, I collect the screenshots, and then I'm just gonna make a video. I'm like, yeah, but just I ain't had the time to do it. I ain't gonna <laughs> lie, bro. Like like it's a lot of work. People don't understand. Sure, bro. Bro. You're a content creator, bro, out there, bro. Just keep going, bro. We mm-hmm. know it's hard, bro. You're gonna have a long night to edit in, trying to figure out what button to push to go to do what effect you want, bro. It's so irritating, bro. <laughs> Makes me want to rip my laptop in half <laughs> and break a wall. Or, you know what I mean? Like put a hole through the wall. Like it's crazy, but 
it's it's cool to learn though, bro. As I was going and the more I kept learning, bro, it, it became like real cool and real yeah. fun. Like I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, sure. you definitely gotta love it though. You definitely gotta love oh, what you're doing. One hundred percent, bro. Because it's it's easy easy to like fall off, get distracted, and get real lackadaisical. You know what I'm saying? Because like. You f- especially like especially you feel like let's say you're having a good run like this this month you've been putting out videos and you've been doing good you feel like uh man well i didn't i don't need to do a video like you know what I'm saying? Oh, i forgot let's say you missed the time or whatever time you post you missed the time and you think like, oh i'm just gonna wait till tomorrow to post because uh, i missed the time nah bro just 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 post the video yeah. I, I have to learn like bro it's better instead of trying to make the video perfect trying to make the video like this and that bro it's it's Somebody's gonna watch it and be entertained, and you know what I'm saying. Just do better on the next one. I'm trying to tell you, especially if you ain't got no content, because a lot of people don't know it's another gym, bro. You gotta work, you gotta get in the algorithm before you get pushed out. And the more like content stuff you put out, you'll get in the algorithm, and then the algorithm, like you know what I'm saying, the AI will put you like mm-hmm. start pushing you out too. So and yeah. also too, just try to find like, like try to find something that's interesting to people. Like you know what I'm saying. Like think about, and I ain't gonna lie, people told me I should vlog because. Everything I be doing, like how I be talking, and like just me, like my personality. But I always thought like, ain't nobody gonna sit here and watch this vlog. I'm sitting here holding the camera, talking. Yeah, like, they you do, know what bro. Saying? They do. People be locked in, bro. For sure, bro. People be yeah. sitting there locked into like whatever you got going on in your life. Especially yeah. even if you're not like, I don't know. I was like, damn, I did not know people be like that. Yeah. But especially you out like just being in San Francisco, Houston, mm-hmm. like all those places. Like, yeah, I, I think that would be. Yeah, I mean vlogs. I like vlogs. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and like I never thought about it. I thought people mm-hmm. were like. Didn't really care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Mm-hmm. Not for sure, man. But <sighs> hey, that's that's Prince. Prince hype man Prince. Yeah, hype man Prince, man. Yes, what, what do we just say, bro? If it ain't hype, <laughs> it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? No, y'all know the face. Y'all know yes, the sir. name. Yes, sir. But yeah. Till next right. time, bro. Till next, next time. This is great, bro. I, I like this. This, yeah. this is a great show, bro. Oh, yeah. I knew it was going to be great, though. Yeah. I knew for it sure. was. I knew it was. Mm. I knew it was, bro. I like. I didn't know you was that tall though. I ain't gonna lie, bro. You know, you're like six four, nigga. Yeah, I was, that, that's what a lot of people. I look. I was say, like, bro. this. I was like, bro, kind of <laughs> tall. What the? Nah, we uh, we hooped a little bit, bro. Back, back in the back in our day. No, I, I am, bro. I told, I told this guy, bro. Yeah, at I, was, Beast, I, was, I was telling Beast. him. Yeah. Oh, you told him? Yeah. yeah. It is, tomorrow at twelve, where right? I said Beast at twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm sliding, bro. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Nah, fact. We got to, bro. We got to. Nah, fact. You better play some defense, bro. <laughs> better play some defense. But yeah.